After finishing his Big Bacon Classic combo, Erie, Pennsylvania resident and Wendy's patron Don Turnby, 38, expressed uncertainty today regarding what to do with all the extra ketchup packets. Turnby had asked for extra ketchup upon placing his order for a ketchup necessitating Biggie fries. Well, I knew it was too many ketchups because I usually only need three or four for my Biggie fries, but I just took them anyway. At his nearby home, the Turnby Pantry is crammed with hundreds of other restaurant condiments, including single-serving packets of Taco Bell mild sauce, Arby's horsey sauce, soy sauce, McDonald's chicken McNuggets hot mustard sauce, pats of shed spread country crock from Ponderosa Steakhouse, and a selection of Smucker's jellies and jams from several area diners. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here to bring up whatever you'd like. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, and you can also join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Though we have uh, somebody on the line on Skype already. I asked him last night to call in at the top of the show this evening because we really haven't covered the story beyond when he called last night of this man who allegedly beheaded a co-worker uh, in Oklahoma. And the headlines have been everywhere. And so I'm glad we have Will Culley on the line with us from Muslims for Liberty. That's Muslims, the number for liberty.org. And he's uh, calling from his home in Tennessee. Will, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to talk to you guys again, as always. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show tonight. By the way, it's Ian and Mark here in the studio, and uh, I, I, I don't know a whole lot about this story beyond the fact that the you know somebody got upset at work uh, and then ostensibly murdered another. Was it one or two uh, people? I think it was two. It was two people. Uh, we're I, also I supposed to assume they're not Highlanders. Were both of them be were both beheaded or just, just one? one? Just the one. First. Okay, so yeah. um, and you are a Muslim. And yeah. so, therefore, you must have something valid to say on this topic. So, uh, <laughs> fill us in. Well, actually, um, I've been doing a little research into the person, uh, this Alton Nelson. And um, there's a purported Facebook page that's reported, that is being reported by some media outlets to belong to this gentleman, Alton Nelson. Is it Alton Nelson or Alton Nolan? I... Nolan. That's it. Okay. Alton Nolan. And um, I'm, I'm looking over the Facebook page, and immediately there's certain things that pop out at me. Um, you guys know that I, I study the, doc, the Salafi doctrine um, mainly for the purpose of being able to debate with people who have uh, extreme views or who uh, could have the uh, you know, chance to advocate or support people who advocate violence. What is the Salafi so, doctrine? Well, it's a newer – uh, religious doctrine in the Islamic tradition, uh, it's been around for a little over, well, it's been influential for a little over a hundred years. Uh, it was created in the late 1700s. Uh, they, they tried to uh, have a revolution, uh, took Mecca by force and, you know, burned the libraries and such. Then they were driven Always back. Always the first thing you want to burn, you know, let's burn the libraries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but they were driven back. And then the Brits uh, noticed that they were crazy people and wanted to help overthrow the, the Ottoman Empire. So the Brits started funding their leader, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al-Najd, like around 10,000 British pounds a month. And that's basically how we ended up with this doctrine becoming so influential was hmm. once um, these, you know, the al-Sads and the al-Sheikh family – were able to take over Saudi Arabia and get their hands on all that oil wealth. They've basically been able to subsidize or export their, you know, rigid view of Islam uh, worldwide. Even though the scholars who were the foremost scholars of their time when this sect originated, they all called them deviants. You know, they said that these people believe that they're the only ones who think that they're Muslim and everyone else should be killed. Mm -hmm. Even if they're Muslim, if they don't agree with them, we should kill them. They opened the door for murdering scholars. 
Um, so these people are deviants. Um, but that ideology has had the ability now to have $3 trillion of oil wealth backing it for 100 years. So, you know, it's kind of hard to compete with that kind of money. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. But this, I've studied this, uh, this, this ideology. I actually went to a university in Qatar that uh, the, the guy who started the school is a very famous Salafi. Um, so that I could study their ideology and, and understand it. And when I look at this guy's page, these are the people that flip out and go end up committing, you know, go join ISIS and, you know, blow themselves up. These, this is the sect that these people end up coming from. Okay. And there's certain things about them that are very telling. Like when they become Muslim, they, they pick Muslim names like Abdullah or Muhammad or Abdul Rahman. They don't pick Rastafarian names like Jakim, which is what this gentleman here has changed his name to, is Jakim Yisrael, which is an African name and yeah. a Hebrew name put it together. Africanized, yeah. Now, where are it's, you seeing the Jahib name? I'm seeing uh, they're claiming he's called, uh, let's see, Alton Nolan. Uh, is it's not Suhaib Webb? Is that not someone else? Or oh, no, it? no. Suhaib Webb is a... A well uh, as a noted scholar who is a part of some people call him the American part of the American Islam movement. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the more foremost scholars in the U.S. and he's the guy that's giving sermons on the thirteen virtues of Ben Franklin and on uh, you know Martin Luther King. He's your like born in Oklahoma. He's from there. Originally, but he lives in Boston. And oh, I see. Yeah, I miss. I misread this. Uh, th there's a news article over at Breitbart where they bring Suhaib Webb up. He's apparently, ostensibly, the leader of the Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City, which was allegedly attended by this man Alton Nolan, who uh, no, did the supposed beheading. No, he's originally from Oklahoma City, but he's currently the leader of the big mosque in Boston. I see. Yeah. Um, but he's originally from Oklahoma City. That's where he became Muslim was in Oklahoma City. But he now runs, like I said, a huge mosque in Boston. Okay, so you're saying that uh, that Alton Nolan picked a Rastafarian name for himself. Well, actually, it's a name that would be common with the black Israelite movement. They're like uh, an extreme racially separatist movement. They believe that blacks are the original Israelites. They're somewhat militant. Um, but the name that he chose wasn't a Muslim name. It was a name that, that is normally uh, identified with the African Israelite movement. And when he speaks, his terminology is strange because— And when you say you know, speaks, do you mean his posts on his Facebook page or yeah, have you actually heard him speak? On, no, no. His posts on his Facebook page are odd because you've seen Davi and I interact with each other. And we say, assalamu alaikum to each other. Um, but he doesn't say that. He says, Shalom Aleichum, which is Hebrew. Hmm. It's a Jewish greeting, not a Muslim greeting. So when he greets, he says, Shalom Aleichum, O ye Muslims, on his Facebook page. I mean, I'm reading it right here in front of me. Um, that's odd because Muslims don't say that. It's not something, you know, that's a Hebrew term. It's something that is used specifically in Judaism, not in Islam. Muslims use the Arabic greeting. So, I mean, it, he also has uh, pictures where he's taken photographs of girls that he says are inappropriately dressed at the mosque and then uploads them on his Facebook page. Salafis would do the opposite of that. Like, they would be so outraged, they wouldn't want, they wouldn't to want look, that to be seen. Definitely, yeah, wouldn't mm -hmm. want to share that with the public. Like, I know Salafis that are friends of mine that are on my Facebook page that they want to find a way to get rid of the advertisements on the side mm. because some of them have girls that are dressed in a way that they deem inappropriate and they don't want to have to look at it. I'm like, well, then just turn off your Facebook page. So but, are you, know, you suggesting this guy wasn't— an ad block work? That, are you yeah, suggesting yeah, this guy I, wasn't a Muslim or that he was just really confused? Well, yeah, it seems—his his Facebook makes him seem really schizophrenic because— He's he's got a black Israelite name. He's quoting Thessalonians in the Bible after giving a Jewish greeting as a Muslim. What does that you tell know, you? I mean, what does that say to you? It, it seems like he's very he's either very confused or I mean, we're, it it makes sense that, that this this man is mentally ill in mm -hmm. some way. You know, he's he he uses the term "peace be upon him" 
like randomly in his posts. Like they don't seem to have any. When when Muslims say the name of Muhammad, sallallahu they say either sallallahu in Arabic or they say peace be upon him in English. Well, he takes that term peace be upon him and just kind of drops it here and there in his Facebook posts, like they, like with no rhyme or reason. I think so, it's fascinating, and I want you to stick with us if you can. Do you have a little bit of time? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Will Colley is with us from Muslims, the number four, liberty.org. We'll uh, come back with more with Will and your calls and thoughts. Maybe you've got a question for Will. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on uh, you know being a Muslim and Islam, and you know, I've read the Quran. I've probably done more research than the average person, but Will obviously knows his stuff. So if you've got any questions, uh, I'm sure he'd be happy to help. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We continue with Free Talk Live coming up. Yeah. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, September 26, 2014, gold opened at 1215.70. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1260.41, 630.21 for a half ounce, or 315.10 for a quarter ounce. That's 1260.41, 630.21, and 315.10. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well, but if you've got a question for Will from Muslims for Liberty, you will need to call on our phone lines. The Skype username, though, just for future reference, is lrn.fm. And also want to let you know about ExpressCoin. ExpressCoin is the best way to get your hands on Bitcoin. Now, unless your religion prohibits you from having alternative currencies besides the government-issued money out there, and I don't know of any religions that do that. Nor do I. Um, you really want to look into Bitcoin if you haven't yet done so. Go and uh, learn more about Bitcoin. You can go to weusecoins.com. You can go and get your free Bitcoin wallet. There's instructions on how to do that there. Once you've got your Bitcoin wallet set up, and it only takes a, a moment or two to, to set one of those up, you can then load it up with Bitcoin, and the best way to do that is to go to ExpressCoin.com. Now, when you go there, it's easy to set up an account. In fact, you can even download their smartphone app from ExpressCoin.com. And then when you order from ExpressCoin, you can do it with money order. Uh, you can do it with uh, cash deposit, cashier's check, that kind of thing. Uh, when you order your Bitcoin through ExpressCoin, they'll deliver it relatively quickly, usually within about a business day. It'll appear in your wallet. And uh, they really care about customer service. They want to make sure you're taken care of. In fact, they want you to really test the waters out. That's why they're offering you up to $40 worth of Bitcoin for zero cost. No fee. And I believe you can take advantage of that more than once. Right? It's not so, zero cost. I mean, you, you pay for the Bitcoins themselves. You just don't pay a fee on a transaction fee. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, yeah, you're obviously going to have to pay for the Bitcoins. I'm sorry. They're not giving away Bitcoins. I'm sorry if it made it sound, if I made it sound like that. It was I just not want my to be attention. clear. You know, normally when you exchange uh, money from one form to another, you got to pay some sort of fee for that. Sure. And uh, if you use code FTL at ExpressCoin.com, you will not have to pay a fee uh, if it's less than a forty-dollar order. It's my understanding you could do that more than once. So you could do that on another day, right, Mark? Yeah, you could like buy forty dollars this you could. week. Yep. You could buy forty dollars the next week, uh, and or up to forty dollars and uh, pay no fee by using code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. And you can, of course, also purchase alternatives to Bitcoin, like Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. It's also now available in Canada and the U.S. So go to ExpressCoin.com. Grab your Bitcoins today. All right, let's go back to uh, the uh, the Skype here, where we've got Will Cauley on the line from Muslims for Liberty. He's been looking deeply into this case of Alton Nolan, the man who is allegedly responsible for a beheading in Moore, Oklahoma. They're saying that uh, it was an at-work sort of upset that had occurred and this man went back and uh, beheaded people or one person and killed another uh, we've got will on the line here muslims the number four liberty.org the website and you know we've come across the issue of uh, islam on free talk live in the past and what i find is that people just don't know anything about it they really don't know they, it's an easy boogeyman yeah they uh, you know they've heard some sort of uh, claims on the talking head shows on television or on talk radio and, of course, usually those people are not well-researched in what they have to say about this. So why not go to someone who actually is a Muslim? And uh, so I welcome you back to the program here. And if you do, if listeners have a question for you, they may call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. But just to sum up so far what you've said, uh, you've pointed out this character, Alton Nolan, the alleged uh, murderer, that he is... Uh, supposedly one who su uh, subscribes to what you call the Salafi philosophy of uh, Islam. And you sort of describe the Salafi philosophy as one that that embraces violence to some extent. That was my understanding of what you said, and do correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yet, when you looked at this guy's Facebook page, you saw some strange inconsistencies that led you to believe that this guy may just be a mentally ill person and doesn't really even understand uh, the philosophy that he supposedly subscribes to. Yeah. Um, well, a, a good example would be um, on his Facebook, uh, August 7th, Jaquim Yisrael, um, the, the, the verbiage, a night at the Islamic mosque in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, with two of my brothers from Morocco, photo, peace be upon him, amin. Right. Why would, you, why would you want to peace be, t to peace be upon a photo? Right? Well, yeah, why would you say Islamic mosque? You know, I mean, it just that, this isn't the way Muslims talk. 
Yeah, I've been Muslim for for seven years. I've been hanging out with Muslims. Um, I went to, like I said, I went to a school specifically that taught a Salafi doctrine um, to be able to understand it, so mm -hmm. that I had the ability to go out and to basically to debate and refute some of the ideas um, that are pushed. And it's not really that Salafis embrace violence. It's just that for some reason their group seems to be the one that these people most often come from. Okay, I'm glad you uh, clarified that because I did see something when I pulled up the Salafi, and it's spelled S-A-L-A-F-I, pulled that up on Wikipedia. They do claim that there is a Salafi jihadi or jihadist uh, movement. So maybe within the Salafis there are a portion of them who have taken on, uh, you know, embracing violence? Yeah. Well, they're the ones that, you know, they're strict literalists. Um, they don't understand that sometimes religious texts have metaphor. Mm. Well, those they people are always a fun that. bunch. Uh, whether yeah. we're talking about uh, Christian literalists or Muslim literalists or uh, Islam um, literalists, it's, yeah. they're never fun to deal with those people. They're always just so rigid, and it's awful talking to they're them. A modern, they're a modern uh, – What's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a sect, I guess you could say. Like they're a new group. They're, they 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 didn't exist 250 years ago. So what is their relation to a Wahhabist, and what's the difference, if any? And what is a Wahhabist? Basically, Salafi is the the word that they call themselves now. You know, the the word Wahhabi got a bad rap uh, over time, and now they've basically started calling themselves Salafis. I mean, that's the long and the short of it. It's it's just a new uh, adjective uh, for the same group. Gotcha. Now, um, is this the literal, uh, not ha not having read uh, the Quran or knowing much about this, uh, Ian's read it, I haven't read it. Um, I've got better things to do than read religious texts. But, I was in jail at the time, had yeah, plenty of time. You had some time. But, um, you know, it's nice to have people who do know these an the answers to these things. There, oftentimes we're confronted with uh, callers that'll say things like, you know, all Muslims uh, are commanded by the Quran to, like, kill off folks that don't believe like them. Now, they have to give you a chance. It's like touching base and tag or something like that. You have to have the opportunity to turn Muslim mm. before they lop your head off or whatever. But they're Will lopping has, the heads off of lots of uh, Muslims over there right now. Will has never tried yeah. to kill me. In fact, he fed me during the Porcupine Freedom Very Festival. Very well, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the, uh, the there's a verse in the Quran that says that if it had been God's will, all men would have believed every man on earth. Would you then compel men toward belief? So it asks the question, like, if it, if it was God's will, this would already be. So what gives you the right to think that you can do this through force? Then you have uh, uh, La Ikra Fiddin, which is basically the calling card or the the motto of, of Muslims for Liberty. Let there be no coercion in deen. You know, and that was specifically revealed because a group of Muslim converts were trying to forcibly convert their children. These aren't like adults. These are like 10-year-olds who had grown up Christian, and the parents were trying to tell them that they had to now be Muslim. And because of that, the verse was revealed, let there be no coercion in deen. So, and then you have another one, uh, I think it's 60 and 8, that states that God has not told you you can't be friendly with those who haven't tried to take your property or kill you because of your faith that you should deal equitably with those people. So, Will, hold you know. your thoughts. I want to bring you back here. Uh, can we have you for the, the rest of the hour if necessary? If you can have me as long as you like. Awesome. I and you can that. take hard questions, right? Yes, I mentioned you I can. can. I, I, used to do tea, I used to give lectures on Islam to tea party groups. Right. I can take any question you want. Perfect. 855-450 free. You got a question for a Muslim? We got one. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX 
That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here. Our number is 855-450-FREE. Now, you can bring anything up that you'd like, uh, although if that's what you intend to do, you're going to have to wait until we're done with the conversation about the alleged beheader in Oklahoma. We've actually got Will Cauley from Muslims, the number four, liberty.org. Uh, he's on the line with us here, and he's willing to take whatever questions about being a Muslim, Islam, and the various different uh, variants on it. Uh, he is well-researched, unlike me. I'm semi-researched. Mark, you aren't really researched really very nope, much. No, I'm as ignorant as they come. Uh, at all. So uh, we've got a variety of different uh, levels of information here. But even I knew, I mean, uh, having done the, the cursory level, I've, I've read the Quran, I've read you know, some history about uh, Muhammad. Uh, even I knew about uh, assalamu alaikum. I mean, this is a common greeting. Uh, you yeah, know. Even I know that. Yeah. <laughs> And apparently the guy who has allegedly committed a beheading out in Oklahoma, uh, he didn't really understand that one. And that's like one of the most basic uh, is Islam you know, tenets. I don't know if it's a tenet, but uh, things they do. Uh, and so welcome back, uh, Will. You're back here on Free Talk Live. Wanna, uh, get some, we've got some folks on the line here who have some questions for you. And you, de you did say you can take the hard questions, so I appreciate that. I know a lot of people don't really understand uh, Islam at all. They just have heard 
hateful things said on talk radio, and they think that everybody in the religion is as is dangerous or is out to kill them. And of course, that's ridiculous because if that were true, then there'd be a lot more dying going on. You know, if there were actually some sort of uh, you know commandment to murder people who don't convert. Uh, we see a whole lot more killing going on all around the world and across the United States. Uh, but I also want to encourage folks to go and check out LibertyStickers.com. There are so many great stickers over at LibertyStickers.com. They're witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic and liberty-oriented. At LibertyStickers.com, you can reach thousands of people uh, with your bumper stickers or sticker. And, of course, you can go there and get them pretty cheap. You can actually order your own. So for whatever reason they've got, they don't have what you're looking for, you can just make your own. Over at LibertyStickers.com, you can order them in bulk as well. So, Will uh, Coley, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Thanks for being here. Oh, glad to, glad to be here as always. Love talking with you guys. Any other thoughts you want to just throw out there before we jump into uh, folks uh, and their phone calls? Well, sure. Um, uh, well, on your uh, not every Muslim is a crazy person, I actually was doing a little bit of uh, of. You separate. found out otherwise? Yeah, well, to, to go along with some of Davi's research on the authoritarian sociopathy that you guys have heard about, and the conservative estimates put that 4 to 5% of the global population of human beings are sociopaths. Hmm. So that means that every group, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, atheists, white people, black people, green people, brown people, 5% of your group are sociopaths. Okay. So for basically it looks like the Muslims, our sociopaths have found a way to organize. They've all found a way to meet each other and hang out with each other and, uh, you know, become friends and then spread their idiocy as far as it will reach. Let's go to the phones here. We've got Jeff. He's on the line in Bowling Green, uh, probably listening to WKCT. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how's it going there? Welcome, I sir. have a question. Under the uh, Islamic religion, if I'm a Muslim and I'm speaking to a non-Muslim, isn't it okay for me to withhold the truth or lie to them because they are an infidel? And actually, whatever your answer is regarding this, it's going to be hard to believe you. <laughs> so let me hear your response. <laughs> Boy, I wonder where that one came from. Go ahead, Will. Sure. Um, actually, I, 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 what, what I find really funny is that when I hear that question— I hear echoes of Salafis because, again, being in these debates, often you see Shia and Salafis debating with each other. And the same accusation that he just leveled against myself as a Muslim generally is the accusation that these people make against the Shia, that you can't trust anything a Shia says because they practice the Shia and the Sunnis don't. Um, so... Some, it actually makes me feel almost kind of hard to feel sorry for Sunni Muslims because I know that this is an accusation that has been – that they have leveled at Shiites for the last thousand years. So it's almost kind of like uh, a karma uh, so if you believe in that sort of thing. Is there some doctrine like this out there? Well, the way that it, that it is described in the Sunnah is that there was – the first martyr of Islam was a woman. Her name was Samaya. And her and her husband were both killed by the pagan Arabs because they refused to renounce their faith. Now, their son was tortured as well. And after his mother was murdered in front of him, and then his father succumbed to basically death, not in the midst of torture, but in the middle of the night after days and days of being tortured, they tortured the son, and the son renounced his faith under duress and he was released and when he went back to the prophet the prophet sallallahu told him that he had not committed a sin because under duress he had renounced his faith he had told a lie he was put in a position where if he didn't say i'm not muslim they were going to either a continue to torture him or b they were going to murder him so when you're in that position when you're in the position that you could lose your life for your faith you have the right to preserve your life. You have the right to say, no, I'm not Muslim. Now, I if, say things on the air similar to this, which is is that I, for instance, if there's a man trying to rob you and you have money in two pockets, you give him the money out of one pocket, and he asks you if you have any more money, I would say that you are not wrong 
to say, no, I have no more money, to lie to a person that's stealing from mm-hmm. you. In the same way that I feel that you're completely justified in lying on income tax forms because the government's stealing from you. Yeah, right, right. Well, basically, it's, a, it, it's, it's an out for if Muslims are put in a position of an extreme duress where they're like under torture or they're being threatened with death. Now, the Shia see this as something that sh- – beca- and it makes sense because they've been the marginalized and oppressed minority within the Muslim community where if you were Shia, there were certain Sunni leaders that would just murder – they would just kill you. You know, they were – How could they trust you, right? To- exactly. They had programs to basically wipe out the Shia. So the Shia, they employed this quite often, whereas the Sunnis would state – that death is better, to die for your faith hmm. is better than to renounce it. Under but that's direct. a cultural thing that's grown up around Islam, not part of Islam. No, no, it is a part of Islam. It's, but, but the ability to renounce is what I'm saying. This yeah. Is a, the, the, or, excuse me. The, the unwillingness under- to renounce your religion is a cultural thing that has grown up around a Sunni Islam. It's not part of the actual Quran. The doctrine Sunni Islam does allow for you to renounce your faith if you're under duress, okay. but they state that it's better for you to die for your faith. It's an allowance, gotcha. like, like a dispensation. Like it's not what's in, what's best, but it's something that's allowed. So, how did that get transmuted into what Jeff said? And Jeff, by the way, is still with us here. Uh, how did that get transmuted into what Jeff said, which is you know the idea that if you're a Muslim, then uh, you can just lie any old time if it's convenient. Pur- purposeful misinformation. Basically, there you go, Jeff. Uh, any any comments? Uh, I just want to give you a chance. Taking something that's very simple yeah, and it's very uh, straightforward in the text. It in it, the only time that it was ever practiced in the Sunnah is in the text. It says this man was tortured, and because he was tortured, he was given the right to renounce his faith. If you're under duress, Got you it. can renounce your faith. Jeff, your thoughts? Let's get let's take Jeff. Yeah, it's just it just it's kind of obvious to me that there's so many different interpretations. That, that causes a problem. and the No, it's not a multitude of interpretations. Place. There's one interpretation. One interpretation well, why, is there so that many under duress, you have the right to renounce your faith. Sunnis don't practice it as often as Shia do. Sunnis encourage that you die for your faith. Got it. But the interpretation is not different. Well, stand by. Jeff, go ahead real quick. Well, I just, uh, you know, the growth of Islam only takes place through fear and oppression. Oh, I don't know if that's true at all. Uh, thank you for I the mean, call tonight. I'll, I'll let bit. Will address that here in moments. Well, Will, you're it. a convert. Were you Well, oppressed? hang on. We'll, we'll bring uh, Will back here in just a moment. We'll talk about that. He, Jeff's claim is that uh, Islam only grows through fear and oppression. And Will was not born into a Muslim family. We'll uh, get a little more of his history coming up here in moments. We'll take your calls as well at 855-450 free. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 
1,500-foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which one you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Excuse hey, me. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 35% of U.S. credit accounts are facing collection agencies. Of that 35, almost 40% are the result of medical bills. Before uninsured friends or family go in for medical treatment, send them to asiarunlikehellguide.com. No computer tracing, no tracking cookies. They will not go on a list. Privacy matters. Just tell us what you need. Get a quote. Fractions of U.S. prices. asiarunlikehellguide.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want, toll free. We've got ourselves a real-life Muslim on the line here. <laughs> He's Will Coley from Muslims, the number four liberty, uh, and that's m- Muslims, the number four liberty dot org. You can go there and check out their website at your leisure. Our toll-free number, if you have a question for him, is 855-450-FREE. We had him on initially to discuss the beheading situation in Oklahoma and sort of to summarize what he had to say there. Basically, this character who allegedly performed the beheading on one of his former co-workers and then killed somebody else not in a beheading manner. I'm not sure how the other murder was uh, was committed. I'm not, I haven't done... He had a knife. I haven't dug enough into that. But uh, basically, he says this guy is just a sociopath, a psychopath, a nutcase, uh, that he doesn't even seem to really grasp some of the basics of being a Muslim. But we'll continue here. Your thoughts and comments. Questions. Certainly tough questions are welcome. We've had a couple of toughies so far. We're going to continue. 855-450 free. Coming up, Mark, we're going to be in Florida. Actually, this time next week, we're going right. to be in Orlando for what? Coinsinthekingdom.com. We're going to do it uh, at, at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando. This The hotel is the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista in downtown Disney, October the 4th through the 6th. We'll be there the 4th and the 5th for the Coins right. in the Kingdom event. And the 6th, they're going to go out to, to Disney World and have a great time. Now, um, tickets for the event are $60. That's pretty low. It's amazingly yeah. low. Um, hotel rooms, 100 Kids under 12 are free. Uh, it's going to be a great time. All kinds of Bitcoin folks are going to be there for the Bitcoin party. It's going to have uh, folks like, uh, yeah, Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me. There's going to be Jeremy Gardner from the Cryptocurrency College Network. Uh Perry Ann Boring from the Chamber Chamber of Digital Commerce and uh, Will Pagman from Tapakee. So it's going to be a great event. Please come on out and uh, check it out. It's uh, Jason King, by the way, from Sean's Outpost. Those, that's only a slice of the speakers. Oh, you yeah, go to their website, coinsinthekingdom.com. You'll see the full list of who's speaking there. Yep. 
there you go. Um, it is it's not too late to get in on this. Coinsinthekingdom.com. Yeah, go and grab your ticket, 60 bucks or Bitcoin. You can buy your tickets with Bitcoin. Of course. So we'll look forward to seeing you there, coinsinthekingdom.com. As we continue, we've got Will on the line with us here. Hey, uh, Will from Muslims for Liberty, just real quick before you uh, get to the tough question here, our last caller threw out there about the growth of Islam. Uh, is there any prohibition uh, within Islam about using alternative currencies? Not that I know of. Davi Barker, uh, our assistant national director, actually wrote a very good article where he took one of the um, – contemporary Islamic economic scholars, like one of the most well-known and renowned, took his rule, rules for currency and applied them to Bitcoin to basically de decipher whether or not Bitcoin would be something that would be uh, a, a com uh, an Islamically compliant currency. Um, compared to the American dollar, it's far more compliant because it's not based on debt and interest. Hmm. You know, it's based on its act it's based on its value. Its value is based on its value. Whereas, you know, the value of the dollar is based on debt and interest. So it's true. Uh, every dollar is actually compliant. evidence of debt when they issue dollars. It's essentially creating debt from from yeah, thin air. Exactly, exactly. Well, so it's called a so, note, just like a note right. on your house, it's a Federal Reserve note. Exactly, as opposed to what it used to be, which was a silver certificate. That's the difference between what it once was. You could turn it in and get silver back for it, and they stopped doing that a long time ago. So, uh, Will, you had a. We're going to get back to more some. Of, uh, there's more calls on the line for you here, and I appreciate your willingness to to field these phone calls because I think that this information is so important. I think this is one of the most important issues uh, of our time, alongside of uh, immigration. I think that uh, you know people coming to understand. What a Muslim actually believes, uh, or at least in some cases, you're, you as a Muslim, because there's different belief systems. Well, it's obviously. like saying what Christians I mean, believe. Right. I mean, there's so many denominations, you don't know what any of what, what they believe. Right, right. So it's good to get some information out there, and I appreciate that. So the the, yeah. the allegation leveled uh, at you was that, or at Islam, is that the growth of Islam, says our last caller, comes only through fear and oppression. Now, you weren't threatened into becoming a Muslim, were you? I'd never met a Muslim before that before I had already I was basically convinced after about three years of personal study that is that I was Muslim um, before I ever walked into a mosque or met a Muslim. I actually joke sometimes because the Muslim community, uh, because of the uh, just tons and tons of culture that that, you know, comes along with it. Um, that if I had hung out with Muslims for very much time before I became one, I probably wouldn't have hmm. because Muslims are really hard you know, to deal with as far as the culture shock is concerned when you're used to things being one way and then you know, they do things a completely different way. It, 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 it what do you mean? Can you give me an example of what you mean when you're talking about this, this culture well, shock? Like, uh, I used to run a Feed the Homeless program at the mosque that I first became Muslim in. And we would go out and buy boxes of juice boxes for giving out to the kids at the homeless shelters. And on Sunday school, they would have the Muslim Sunday school in the morning, and then we would go do the feed in the afternoon. And the Sunday school kids would raid the fridge and drink up all the juice boxes. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, since it's been stated that those are for the homeless, that's an offense. That's something that you shouldn't do. But to them... It's juice, it's in the fridge, and it's in the mosque, so you can't get upset that the kids drank it. So, like, to me, it was like, no, we told the kids that it's not, so now they know it's stealing. And they're like, no, this is the masjid. If there's food here, then people have access to it. Hmm. If you don't want them to get into it, you should keep it in the car. You know, like, if it's in the building and it's in the fridge, then it's free game for any child here. You're you right. That's, that would be <laughs> difficult for me to accept. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it just it, I couldn't wrap my head around it. You know, it bothered me. But it was a cultural thing that was completely different, you know, mm -hmm. and I had to get used to. So the but fear and the oppression thing, that didn't factor into you become a Mus uh, becoming a Muslim. And in fact, I think that a statement like that, the sort of across-the-board statement, you, Islam has only grown through fear and oppression, really just ignores the entire history of, uh, of Islam. I mean, as I understand it, uh, two, when two I was— Two of the like, um, like Arab countries aren't aren't ninety and ninety five percent Muslim. You know, there's Christians and Jews and like different pagan groups like Zoroastrians and stuff that are mixed in with the population. Malaysia and Indonesia, on the other hand, are like ninety six percent Muslim, and they were both converted through trade. Muslim traders came there. They were very um, honest, very trustworthy. 
Um, they, they didn't cheat people, and the people saw that. They were impressed by it, and they wanted to Well, be Islam was also of- very progressive. I mean, you mentioned the pagans. Uh, there were a lot of, uh, as, from what I read about it, I mean, it's it's not to say that back in the day, you know, in, in Muhammad's day, that women were treated equally as men, but uh, the, the, the Muslim, or the Islam actually, you know, advanced the position of women in society back then, as well, I understood it. Well, what, rather than being property, women were now allowed to own property. Basically, that's a pretty big step forward. But what about yeah, the that's Christ- attractive? That's not force. That's not violence. Go ahead, Mark. What about the Christians in um, you know plenty plenty of Muslim countries that I hear news about uh, are having a terrible time getting tortured and a variety of things by the, uh, the Islam there. I mean, are they are they nice? Uh, to, I mean, I, what do you, what's your reaction to that? Well, there if you have Muslims in Muslim countries that are being uh, disrespectful or spiteful or harmful in any way to the to the non-muslims that live with them according to the scholars they're actually violating an oath that was given by muhammad to non-muslims like it's it's blameworthy to even utter according to um al-faruq which is a book of islamic jurisprudence written by a renowned scholar named imam al-qarafi in the 12th century and he's quoting another scholar ibn hazm who lived like just about a hundred years after Muhammad died, to even utter a word of slander against their character is considered a blameworthy offense. I want to bring uh, Blue on the line here in Knoxville. Blue, you're on Free Talk Live with Will Coley Mm -hmm. from Muslims for Liberty. Go ahead, Blue. Blue in Knoxville, I have to say one thing to you before you go. Do you know Blue? I am. I don't know Blue, but I'm sure he saw that Tennessee Kentucky game, and I bet he's as mad about it as I. It's am. actually a she, but go ahead, Blue. You're on with uh, with Will. Football is growing men chasing a big skin. Doesn't impress me at all. Uh, <laughs> but my question for you is: this, this was a question that was brought up on air in our local community. Um, you know, being a lay person with in regard to the Muslim faith. You know, we keep hearing when you die that you get 72 virgins, da-da-da-da-da, if you're a male. Well, the question was brought up, what do the women get? Hopefully it's not a bunch of virgins, for God's sake. (laughs) Blue, thanks for the call tonight. We'll let uh, Will field that coming up here uh, in moments. You said you can stick with us, Will, so I appreciate that. We're going to keep you going here into hour number two. And if you've got a question for a Muslim, we've got one. He's on the line. He's Will Coley from Muslims, the number four, liberty.org. Go check out his website. And uh, can you address the 72 virgins question here in a moment? Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys are going to (laughs) laugh. Okay, great. Uh, More with Will Coley. Your call's welcome. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you? Or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, September 27th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,219 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $406. Antiwar.com reports some 700 Taliban fighters attacked the Azrastan district of the Ghazni province in Afghanistan earlier this week and seem to have more or less taken it over, with provincial officials saying they have lost contact with police in the area. Fighting is expected to last well into the weekend, with over 100 killed and Afghan army forces being pushed back and giving the Taliban effective control over the extremely important district, which includes the nation's main highway, which goes from Kabul to Kandahar. The Taliban has made increasing gains across the south and central portions of Afghanistan in recent months, as NATO tries to stay back and let the Afghan military prove itself in direct fighting. So far, the news has not been good. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports a contract employee who recently was told he was being transferred to Hawaii set a fire at a suburban Chicago air traffic control center where he worked, bringing two of the nation's busiest airports to a halt Friday morning. A criminal complaint was filed in U.S. District Court in Chicago and charges Brian Howard of Naperville, Illinois, with one count of destruction of aircraft or aircraft facilities, which is a felony. The FBI said that Howard remains hospitalized because of his injuries and that no court date has yet been scheduled. A relative who saw a suicidal Facebook note posted on Howard's account early Friday alerted authorities. Meanwhile, a 911 call from the control center brought a suburban fire department to the scene where paramedics followed a trail of blood past a gas can, two knives, and a lighter. When they found Howard, he was trying to cut his own throat and told paramedics, quote, leave me alone. Delays and cancellations rippled through the air travel network from coast to coast after the fire. The ground stoppage at O'Hare and Midway airports immediately raised questions about whether the FAA has adequate backup plans to keep planes moving when a single facility has to shut down. By late afternoon, about 1,900 flights in and out of Chicago had been canceled. A few flights resumed after a nearly five-hour gap. Those planes were moving at a much reduced pace, and no one could be sure when full service would be restored. The early morning fire forced the evacuation of the control center in Aurora, about 40 miles west of downtown Chicago. It was the second unexpected shutdown of a Chicago area air traffic facility since May. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. Reuters reports talks began on Friday to mark out a 19-mile buffer zone between the Ukrainian government forces and the separatist rebels in the country's east. A statement by the military in Kiev said a Ukrainian team met a 76-member group of Russian officers north of the major Ukrainian city of Donetsk to work on establishing the zone designed to put government and separatist forces out of striking range of each other. 
A statement was released saying, Today, a working group began its work. Representatives of the Ukrainian side, a monitoring group from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and 76 Russian servicemen took part. An OSCE spokesman in Kiev said monitors from the 57 Nation Security and Rights Watchdog had observed Ukrainian and Russian military officers at preliminary talks. The spokesman said, We were there in line with our mandate and to help for the effective implementation of a ceasefire. In Moscow, the foreign ministry denied any of its military had met a Ukrainian team to work out details of the buffer zone. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The number of users who actually enjoy Facebook is down to four, and Apple announces a new iPhone with the N-word on the back, knowing customers will buy it anyway. And now for the delayed and utterly thoughtless romantic gesture that is The Onion Week in Review. Self-identified 9-11 truther Dennis Shaw told reporters Tuesday he's absolutely convinced the United States government has orchestrated an intricate plot to systematically destroy the last 11 years of his life. Shaw, who since 2001 has spent nearly every waking minute poring over footage of the World Trade Center attack and even handing out truther pamphlets every afternoon, says the government is behind the gradual collapse of his personal and professional life, adding that the conspiracy, quote, goes all the way to the top. Before 2001, I'd see my friend Stephen Copley every couple of weeks, and now he won't even answer my calls. The, f the f government got to him too. Think about it. My coworkers, my wife, my friends, everyone calling me crazy after September 11th and wanting nothing to do with me. What are the chances of that? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want, though, if you have a question for Will Cauley, one of the founders uh, of Muslims, the number four, Liberty, MuslimsforLiberty.org. He is on the line with us. He's been very gracious in uh, spending the first hour of the show and being willing to continue on to take your calls with your questions because you may have heard some misinformation, believe it or not, uh, about Islam and the various different uh, adherents to that particular viewpoint, which of course is varied. There are a lot of different viewpoints. There's just a like billion the, people on the planet that right. believe in Islam and, uh, you know, about that many who are Christians to right. suggest that uh, pe people who are violent or bad that are Christians. Um, and there have been plenty should, of violent Christians. Should apply to every Christian is kind of silly. So we've got Will here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can't talk to Will if you call our Skype line, so uh, just call the regular number, 855-450-3733. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts. And, Will, uh, thanks again for staying on with us here. You had a question right before we went to the news break there about the 72 virgins, and the question was, well... How many virgins is it exactly? The number seems to keep changing. Well, the, the question was, what about women? Do they get offered the 72 virgins? But I think we should also just address the issue of this claim of 72 virgins. Where does well, that come from? It sounds from? spurious. Where do, yeah, where does that come <laughs> from? Uh, your thoughts. It, it actually comes from a commentary, not from the Quran or any kind of a, a valid source. It's... It, the 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 numerical value uh it's, it was originally 70 and <clears throat> that changed later to 72 um came from uh, one specific scholar who in his commentary wrote that that's what it was so basically it's one scholar's idea and uh, and the idea is specifically that uh <laughs> if you what go on a suicide mission you get 72 virgins what were the parameters around that oh Okay, well, basically, there, there is. Uh, I'll give you the the Quranic verses that are used uh, uh, usually to support this. Um, serving the believers. Now, this is not gender specific. It doesn't say, uh, you know, m m Muslim. Or, you know, may, they, there's no masculine or feminine uh, language usage here because there are masculine and feminine words in Arabic says serving the believers will be immortal youths with jeweled and crystal cups filled with the purest wine which will neither give them headache nor hangover <laughs> wait a second i thought uh, the muslims didn't have anything to do with wine they only get to drink wine in heaven yeah okay <laughs> uh with fruits, sorry about that 
meats of their desire. They will be fair ones with lovely intense eyes like guarded pearls, a reward for the good deeds of their past life. We have created mates for them and made them virgins matched and aged for the companions of the right hand. Serving them will be immortal servants, and when you see them, they will look like scattered pearls. Now, all of these different verses, they're not gender specific. They don't state that they will, men will get this or women will get this. Um, actually, in uh, 225, 2, 225, 3, 15, and 4, uh, it states that they shall have perfected spouses as rewards for their deeds. And again, the word they is a non-gender specific. The believers, men and women alike, will have perfected mates or spouses as a reward for their deeds in, the, in, in their lives. So the ladies okay. do get hot, good-looking uh, cabana boys um, in the uh, afterlife. With uh, wine that doesn't give you headaches. Does the magic wine not make you do foolish things, too? I'm just wondering about that. Well, I would assume it wouldn't get you drunk because, you know, intoxication is the problem with wine. Not we call wine. that grape juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, the, the whole 72 virgins thing originally came. There's a, a, a hadith that's ruled as da'if, which means that it it's quest, it's a, has a questionable chain of narration. Um, so it can't be applied in any legal sense or to back any um any opinion and it states that um where is it at uh here it is the smallest reward each for the people of heaven again non-gender specific is an abode where there are 80,000 servants and 72 spouses over which stands a dome decorated with pearls aquamarine and ruby as wide as the distance from Damascus to Yemen this makes no sense i mean where are you going to get these uh, uh, you know afterlife uh, perfect spouses if they're not already islamic and if they are islamic then don't they get the eight, the 80 uh, spouses too like the math doesn't add up here it's heaven well, mark the rules don't have to apply the, the, yeah, they're just yeah. these are what, these the are angels these, these are perfect creations that have been touched by neither man nor jinn. They literally were are created for heaven. Okay. Uh, jinn their... is what an angel? Does an angel? Is that, is no, that's jinn? like a demon. Jinn's a demon. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> angel is an angel. Gotcha. Yeah, jinn is like a demon. But th these are these are creations that were created specifically for heaven. But see, uh, what. A lot of people don't really talk about is the fact that when Muslim girls go out looking for a husband, they talk about wanting a husband that they can meet in Jannah and in heaven, that they can go and that they can live their life with here and have such a great love that they marry each other in heaven and live together in heaven. So that's what men and women are looking for in this life is a person that they can have as a spouse in the next life. Um, without the need for these servants and, and extra spouses. I've got some more questions about uh, women and uh, Islam here in a moment, but let's go to Michael. He's in Virginia Beach listening to WNIS. Michael, you're on with Will Coley from Muslims for Liberty. Uh, yes, Will. Uh, first of all, how do you spell your last name? C-O-L-E-Y. Uh, say that again? C-O-L-E-Y. Oh, okay. Uh, in uh, in America, we have fifty states, and uh, they are prevented from going to war with each other because we have a constitution and a supreme court with other federal courts underneath it to to interpret that constitution. Why Not doesn't well will what, why doesn't Will Colley uh, take up a campaign contribution for his own organization to promote this idea among Muslim states, which are killing each other in the most barbaric ways because they simply can't agree on what their constitution, the Koran, actually says? The Koran is not a constitution. Yeah, the Quran's not a constitution. Yeah, Muhammad never stated that the Quran was a constitution either. There was a constitution actually in the time of the Prophet Muhammad that did exist. It was called the Compact of Medina. And basically what it was was it was a contract between the Muslims, the Christians, 
the Jews and the pagans that lived in Medina. And what it stated was that the Muslims would have Muslim courts and Muslim leaders for Muslims and Muslim rules for Muslims. And the Christians would have Christian courts and Christian leaders and Christian rules for Christians. And the Jews would have the same and the pagans would have the same. And that if any outsider attacked any of the group inside, all the groups would fight in defense. That was the original, that was the compact of Medina. And that's that's what we advocate at Muslims for Liberty is is a return to that kind of a system because that was basically a voluntarist system where mm. you had independent systems existing on top of each other without conflict and that's what we encourage the the Muslim world to return to. I think we didn't but like to encourage the entire world to go to an organization like that. I mean, that sounds like a great idea. But Michael, uh, until, further thoughts? Go uh, ahead. Until the yes, nation. Hold on, Will. Hang on, Will. M Michael, okay. go ahead. Uh, I, I agree with you. We, we should all go to something like that, but let's just take this one step farther. Uh, we are hearing that uh, these uh, Muslim uh, teachers that are called imams are issuing fatwas on the basis of their interpretation of what uh, the Quran and the Hadith say about how life should be lived in society. And these fatwas actually call for the killing of people. Michael, so we'll, have, uh, we'll have Will address that. Thank you for the call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, Will Coley is with us from Muslims for Liberty. We'll talk about the fatwas here in a moment. Uh, the infighting as well. It's a big issue. It's Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. coffee.freetalklive.com you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves. You can bring up anything you want. Questions, though, uh, that uh, are for our guest, uh, Will Coley from Muslims, the number four liberty, muslimsforliberty.org, uh, will come first. And then we'll uh, get back to our regular format of taking your calls about anything here in a little bit. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You know, if you care about your online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your data, meaning your internet service provider, once you start using ProXPN, will have no clue what you're doing online. Right now, they know every website you're visiting and probably every search term you're entering, and they may be keeping that information in logs for up to five years in some cases. You can stop Sounds that likely. from happening by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and get started by downloading their free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. You can even get it set up on Linux. Uh, Linux setup's a little different, but it, uh, it works. It's pretty simple. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use our discount code to save 50% on the annual account for the lifetime of the account. That means as long as you hold the account, you get that discount by using code FTL50. FTL like Free Talk Live, the number 50. Uh, that brings the price down to about 5 bucks a month. But if that's not cheap enough, use Bitcoin to pay for that annual account and use this code FTLBTC and you'll get 62% off the price of the annual account. Again, uh, it's good for the entirety of the uh, the time span you have the account. Now, uh, with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. You get servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites now you get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee and pro xpn will not keep records of your online habits at all so go and check it out you can start for free but when you're ready to upgrade to premium use code ftl50 or ftlbtc proxpn.com slash ftl it's a great discount on privacy that is priceless we have will coley on the line with us here and uh, just a moment ago we've you know been taking some tough questions for you will you're one of the founders of muslims for liberty that's muslims the number four liberty.org and you've been handling and fielding some tough questions and some sort of you know very common tough questions as well tonight. We've you know addressed the uh, the allegation uh, that Islam only grows through fear and oppression which of course is just nonsense and uh, also uh, the question of fatwas came up just a moment ago what what is a fatwa and what are the you know what is a, is there any truth to the claim that there are these muslim imams out there and what is an imam uh who are issuing these things that are demanding people die go ahead fatwa is just an opinion i mean in a legal sense it doesn't really hold any uh legal sway if you don't follow that scholar so to speak mm -hmm. like um, a scholar in Syria would not be under classical understandings of Islamic jurisprudence. A scholar in Syria would not be able to give a juristic opinion for a Muslim living in Malaysia because they live in Syria. They understand the culture in Syria. They understand what happens in Syria and they have no understanding of Malaysia. So a scholar in Malaysia could give legal opinions for Malaysians because he understands their culture. He understands, you know, the way Malaysians are. 
So if you have like, a, that's one of the big issues that we have in America is that we have a very small group of American scholars, uh, Hamza Youssef, Sahib Webb, uh, Zaid Shakur, Yasser Kavi, uh, but that are born in America, raised in America, have an understanding of what it's like to be an American. There's a very, so a lot of our scholarship is being imported. So you have Muslims from Saudi Arabia trying to tell Muslims in America how to be Muslims in America when they don't have any understanding of that. You know, like they're they're walking around the literally, I kid you not, this actually happened, uh, walking around the airport blindfolded because they didn't want to see the advertisements where girls weren't dressed properly. Okay, I'm sorry, brother, but this is not Saudi. You know, you're going to have to be – we can't hire somebody to walk and hold you by the hand while you go everywhere because there are billboards that you might not like. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, like for Saheb Webb, he would just be like, that's ridiculous. But so, for this guy from Saudi Arabia, it's completely necessary to him because what, that's now, what he thinks is appropriate. When you call it a legal opinion, this is what I'm curious on, is my understanding is that Sharia law has nothing to do with Islam. It's a cultural thing. In the same way that saying English common law is Christian is erroneous, saying Sharia law is Islamic is erroneous. No, that's not true. Okay. No. Um, Does the are, Quran sh- talk about Sharia law? No, it, the Quran doesn't specifically talk about Sharia. What Sharia entails mostly, about probably 70 to 80 percent, is religious ritual, like how to wash properly, how to pray, like um, a difference in opinions. You know, they call it an ikhtilaf, a difference in opinion between like Maliki Sharia and Hanafi Sharia is that the Malikis pray what they call sadl, which is with their hands to their side. And Hanafis pray with their hands crossed above the navel. Well, that's worthy of killing somebody over, I hope. You know, I mean, that's, but those, but, but it, you can't be Muslim and not be practicing Sharia in some way. Okay. It, it, it talks about how to get married, how to look for a wife, how to wash yourself properly, how to properly bathe before you pray, how to pray properly, all of these, how to fast properly, all of these things are encompassed within Sharia, and there are different opinions on all of these things depending on the school that you follow. Like, I follow Maliki school, but I study the other three schools for an understanding on that kind of thing. Well, now, I thought that all you had to do to be Islam is believe in Judgment Day, the afterlife, and uh, the Prophet or something. Well, the what the Prophet Sallallahu says is that if you— if if you state that you believe in the last day and you believe in the oneness of God and the day of judgment and all of these things, then, then if you say la ilaha illallah, then you're a Muslim. Um, yes, that's true. But when you're a Muslim, when you go pray, you're practicing sharia. When you wash yourself to pray, you're practicing sharia. Okay. Um, when you uh, raise your children, you're practicing sharia. When when you pray, hi nanny. <laughs> There's a child right there. There you go. Um, yeah, when you pray um, for protection before you leave your home when you go on a trip, you're practicing Sharia. Uh, so, okay. so there, there okay. are legal parts of it. Yeah, there are legal parts of it. But what most people don't realize, and what's not practiced in modern Muslim countries, is that the legal portion of Islam and the state itself are supposed to be separate. The judges, uh, the entire legal system is supposed to be an independent private body that the state has nothing to do with. They so, don't arrest people for the, for the courts. The only thing that the state could do is they can carry out punishment on behalf of the victim with permission of the victim. So are there uh, the imams, and as an imam, a scholar, I didn't really get that no. clear. No, 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 no. An imam? an imam, literally what the word imam means is the person who leads the prayer. So, like, my kid could be the imam. I see. So uh, so it could be true that an imam somewhere in the world, or more than one of them, has issued some sort of violent <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, legal opinion. Read, no preacher has ever done that. <laughs> no, I've read, I've read them, but there's also uh, one that just came out that was signed by 128 scholars against ISIS and against violence. Against we'll come back violence. with more here in moments. Never hear about that. With Will Cauley. Free Talk Live. 
Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet. Or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job Job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Is it ever appropriate to use violence to oppose the state? I can't say I would blame somebody for wanting to meet the SS at the front door with the clubs and the guns or whatever they could to defend their family. I wouldn't blame them. Gandhi went to jail. What if he had met the uh, English at the door with shotguns instead of going to jail? I don't want to talk about this anymore because, you know, it's just madness. I don't need to be playing these scenarios out where what am I going to do if this happens? Or what am I going to do if that happens? I'm gonna, it's not a good mindset. I'm going to get the chainsaw out and cut a couple of trees across the driveway, and I'm going to sit out there with a 50 gun <laughs> bullet and I'm going to pick them off. I'm going to pick them off. You know, It'll drive crazy, you crazy nuts. I mean, you're going to die from high blood pressure pressure yeah. and a lot of shiny guns i'm a ticking time bomb waiting to go off coppers free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm Wolverine. you're listening to the best liberty oriented audio streamed around the clock on the air and online this is the liberty radio network at lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. We will take your calls, and you may dial in toll-free about whatever happens to be on your mind. Uh, though right now we still have Will Coley on the line here, and uh, we've got, I've got a few more questions for him as 
our token Muslim here uh, on the show. He has graciously allowed us uh, basically have him on the whole show thus far. And uh, we've been taking phone Drill calls. him on all these questions that people have about Islam. People have some tough questions, and they've heard a lot of no- uh, nonsense and misinformation in the mainstream media in across the United States. Uh, and, of course, uh, nonsense misinformation turns into rumor, and that turns into more inf- uh, misinformation, and then it just gets worse from there. So it's good to have some uh, some corrections to some of this info, this misinfo. We're going to continue with that discussion here, but also want to let you know how to get some coffee, some delicious coffee from BuzzBox. It's, well, yeah, it's, free. Hi- it's high-end coffee, and you get a, a free pound if you just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's shade-grown, 100% organic Top 1% grade Arabica beans. So this is really high-end coffee. You're going to love it. I drink it every day, and it's delicious. It's BuzzBox Coffee, and we've teamed up with them to be able to use uh, some of the profits that we get from the sale of the coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com because after you get a free pound, you'll be signed up for a subscription. You can cancel it any time. But if you continue with it, your coffee that you drink on a daily basis can not only satisfy you with your sort of coffee addiction there with uh, caffeine or whatever it is that you like, you can also help people around the world. You can get them a hand up instead of a hand out. We've teamed with Kiva.org in order to give microloans to people around the world. And we've been working with Kiva for a long time. You know, uh, I've had a uh, account at Kiva, and I, um, I'm i glad that we can team up with them through Free Talk Live because now we're going to be able to help people in – I'd like to be able to do – one in every country that Kiva helps. I think it's 180 countries or something like wow. that. And so it'd be really awesome to be able to do somebody from every country. I think we're at four or something like that now. And, uh, you know, help people um, out and all over over the place. Coffee.freetalklive.com to go get signed up. Appreciate everybody who's stuck around with us and continue to get your coffee there. Coffee. It must be good. It's good coffee. All right, so uh, we continue here. Will Culley is with us, Muslims for Liberty, the organization he's involved with, Muslims and number four, liberty.org. And, Will, can you drink coffee as a, as a Muslim? I know that there's prohibitions on intoxication. Uh, does that include uh, caffeine? We kind of invented coffee. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's one of those things that there, you know, that, that there was this big campaign called Muslim Apologies. And uh, basically it was Muslims who are – they have what I call like condemnation fatigue – where like every time somebody does something stupid or says something stupid, every Muslim in America is automatically called on by every person they know, um, you know, their coworkers, their friends, and uh, like, what do you think of this? I want you to say that you think this is bad. I want to hear you say it. It's like, mm-hmm. well, did you hear me say it the last like <laughs> six weeks ago when something happened? You know, like I, I, my opinion didn't suddenly change. Um, so th- there was a, a, a thing started called Muslim apologies. It was a hashtag. So people were like, sorry about modern surgical tools, hashtag Muslim apologies, or sorry about the presumption of innocence, hashtag Muslim apologies, or, and know, these are sorry, all things that you're, you're claiming that Muslims coffee. brought to the modern world. Yeah. Uh, someone who was Muslim, uh, developed, uh, Aver- Averos developed, uh, I mean, not Avaros, Avicenna, developed most modern surgical tools. Like 60% of the tools that he developed in the 12th century are still used today, just modified versions of them. All right, so what's, what is the yeah. rule then? I mean, because if if there's a prohibition against uh, intoxication, how is it that caffeine doesn't uh, measure up to that? It's not seen as a it – doesn't, it doesn't affect the intellect or the ability to use the intellect. I don't intellect. know. Mark gets pretty crazy when he drinks caffeine here. Depends on the person. <laughs> What'd you say, Mark? Depends on the person. Depends on the person. Okay. Right. All right. So, uh, the, hey, other the, the other issues. Thing. The, so, well, the fatwa thing. Um, yeah. I wanted to actually uh, touch on that. Sure. Was the the longest fatwa that I ever read in my whole life was over six hundred and sixty pages. It was oh my. three years of research by a Pakistani scholar of Islamic jurisprudence, and it was a fatwa against. Islamic extremism against terrorism, the targeting of civilians with violence, that whole, all of that. 660 pages, three years worth of research to make sure that it was perfect, on point, and irrefutable. Or you can Google up a quick fatwa on, you know, like 11 different websites and they'll give you like three paragraphs of their personal opinion. So you see the difference in the, in, in, you know, fatwa versus fatwa. You know, you have the one that's researched by a scholar who's spent 40 or 30 years of his life studying the subject and then spent three mm-hmm. years just making sure that everything was perfect in his one legal opinion that he wrote. 
or you've got a website that you can run to and they'll churn you out like three paragraphs in a few hours when you ask them a question gotcha. like a forum you know like this is the difference in the level of uh credibility in the fatwas that are sure. floating around out everybody's there got an opinion and so what you're saying is yeah. a fatwa is just the opinion of somebody who's leading uh some sort well, of well it's supposed to be the opinion of a person who is qualified to have one but that's not what happens anymore we have mm -hmm. what we call google sheikhs you know that they, they're um Wanna be scholars? They're just loudmouths with the ability to use Google, who decide that they're now scholars. What What about the infighting? Because just to come back around to something that I I think deserves further discussion. Uh, one of the common claims is that well, and, and and the earlier caller kind of addressed this to some extent. Well, you know, Muslims are fighting constantly in the Middle East, and the Christians don't do that in the United States. So what's wrong with these people? Well. The concept of the nation state is part of the problem. Previous to World War I, there were none of these artificial borders. Um, the Kurds had their own area, but it wasn't split up between four, quote, sovereign nations. You know, so each group had their own place. Like Iraq is Kurds in the north, Sunnis in the center, and Shia in the south. And these are cultures that have never really gotten along with each other before they were Muslim. So it doesn't really make sense that they would get along afterward. Yeah, and it's kind of ludicrous that, that yeah. white white people, um, or, you know, foreigners come in, draw straight lines on maps, say this, you're a country now, get yeah. along, and that then, you know, decades later, condemn uh, the people inside those, you know, straight lines for not yeah. getting along because hey, we get along fine here. Well, you know, the <laughs> the national borders of the United States have changed over time, and there's been a great deal of conflict with uh, you know over those borders in the past, certainly in the past. Yeah. And so, because uh, you know the uh, the Ottoman Empire kept the you know, populace essentially in check um, up until this century, there's been a lot of churn, a lot of uh, uh, you know problems. Well, look, the, 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 the Shia in southern Iraq have always been a part of the community of Shia in central and northern Iran. They were a, that, that was their group. And then they split that up between two countries and left the Jews and the Sunnis who lived in southern Iran. Um, well, what, what about their community? Like, well, now we're stuck in these borders and part of our community is across another border now. Yeah. So – and. Of course, that created tension between the borders because you've got groups on either side that want to be together that are being artificially kept apart and rulers who have been put in power by Western countries wanting to hold and maintain the control that they have over these imaginary lines that didn't exist, you know, 100 years ago. Another question that, I have for you. That's part of what has been creating uh, – what's going on in a lot of this conflict that we see over there now the nation the existence the idea of nation states is what's leading to a lot of this infighting that makes especially sense. when they well, haven't grown anathema. up organically it's an anathema in islam nationalism is actually seen on the same level as like killing people you know the 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 the, the prophet sallallahu said that god views the person who would fight, die, or advocate for nationalism as lower than the beetle who digs through dung. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You don't often see the um, you know when uh, when you see Islamic warriors, they'll have just some Arabic letters on a flag. They don't actually have a flag, so it's kind of sticks to that uh, that idea. Um, and many Christians have similar f uh, thoughts. Um, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Amish, the Mennonites, uh, Quakers, many of these have no, uh, you know, they don't believe really sort of in saying the pledge and all this nationalistic stuff. We'll come back with more here. If you've got a question for Will Colley, we'll keep him on for one more segment. Get your question in now. 855-450-3733. You may take control here of Free Talk Live. More coming up. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures. And hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvalueinn.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. 
Bellawood Flooring has changed its finishing process. So for the first time ever, Lumber Liquidators is clearing out their current stock of Bellawood at unbelievable prices. Get Bellawood Red Oak Solid pre-finished hardwood for an incredible $2.99 per square foot. That's over 30% off already low prices. Even stunning solid Bellawood Bolivian Rosewood for an amazing 51% off. These are not seconds. This is first quality with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest to you. Special 18-month financing is available. But hurry, these clearance deals end Tuesday. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the tort attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about Muslims, and we've got one on the line with us. He is Will Cauley. He is one of the founders of Muslims for Liberty. That's Muslims, the number four, liberty.org is their website. You want to learn more about them and uh, and or get in touch with further uh, concerns or questions. I'm sure they get it all the time. Lots of misinformation out there about being a Muslim. And uh, we're trying to, I guess, get some answers to some tough questions here tonight. And uh, Will, thanks for uh, for staying on with us here. We're going to continue here and then after this segment we'll go back to our normal format of you can call in about anything you want here on free talk live so again thanks for uh, for sticking with us here we've we've covered a bunch of different issues and those of you just now tuning in uh please you can grab the episode later on tonight over at freetalklive.com and listen in and uh, and and listen to some what I, what I thought were good answers to uh, some some tough questions here but let's let's get into another area 
Um, and actually, we've got another call here uh, for you, uh, Will, so we're going to jump into that. But I also have a question about being a woman and, uh, and a Muslim as well at the same time. So let's go first, though, to Alan, listening in Aberdeen, Washington, to KBKW. Hello, Alan. You're on with Will Coley from Muslims for Liberty. Well, thank you. Hello. Go for it. You're on. I, 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 I'm really kind of appalled uh, at your guest and his approach to this. Uh, it seems like uh, all the good Muslims are always asking for forgiveness for their religion, but they never condone the acts that turn the stomachs of the rest of the world. And I just I can't understand why there isn't a an, a Muslim army that is out there taking these people out if their religion is so good. But you know, and I'll say one last thing, and then I'll get an answer. You know, through history, it's always been the Christians against the Muslims, and you know, I have never seen a Christian that cut anybody's head off. Well, okay. I've seen uh, Christians bombing people to death over in the Middle East uh, as part of the U.S. military. But that aside, I'd like to have Will answer your your concern here tonight. Because maybe you weren't tuned in, Alan, when he earlier uh, pointed out that he thought that this guy in Oklahoma was a sociopath and basically a nut job. But uh, go ahead, well, Will. I'd like, I don't him. want to put words in your mouth. I, well, so. yeah, you, you can't. Uh, and I can't put them in yours or his. But I, I think this is totally ridiculous. Uh you know, this this is a worldwide fight for the world. Have you been Have you been and listening at all to the show tonight? I mean, thus far, I mean, it yes, seems I seems mean, to me you know, like he's I already know. condemned well, violence multiple well, times. Well, Go well, ahead, well, uh, Will. Go hold ahead. on one second. Let me, let me answer the what seems to be the main gist of his question is: Where is the Muslim army that's fighting these people? And uh, they're in Syria and in northern Iraq. Uh, most people know them as the Kurds. Um, and they've been they have a literal military that has been fighting against these people for, well, ever since they started the invasion of Iraq. Um, when Obama dropped his bombs uh, to quote unquote, help the Christians and Yazidis off the mountain, uh, the truth of the matter is is that Kurdish Muslims had already gotten those, people almost all the way to the border of Syria before the bombs of the United States ever fell. So, you know, if you, who's, the, where's the Muslim army? Well, well, they're there on the ground fighting with guns. Uh, the, co the community in Nashville, the Nashville Kurdish community raised around $126,000 to send to the Christian and Yazidi refugees who are staying with their family members, basically. You know, these are people that are Kurdish refugees from Iraq who still have family there that are on the ground that are fighting against, you know, these crazy people in Iraq and in Syria right now. So where's the Muslim army? It's right there. They just don't call them that. Like when the, um, uh, the female fighter pilot from the UAE they call her that. They don't say female Muslim fighter pilot from the UAE. Her faith isn't an issue unless she's bombing, you know, right. the, the wrong people, basically. She's if, doing the wrong thing. She she's a Muslim. People, yeah. If she wasn't bombing the people that we wanted her to bomb, then she would be Muslim. But since she is bombing the people that we wanted her to bomb, she's just a woman from the UAE. And it's the same thing with the Kurds. They never say Kurdish Muslim militia. The Kurdish community is 96% Muslim. So if there's Kurds fighting, they're Muslims. But they never, ever define them as that. So it's, it's, it seems to be a carefully crafted uh, media uh, that if a Muslim is bombing someone that the state doesn't say it's okay, then they're Muslim. But if it is someone that the state says that it's okay, then their faith is never even acknowledged. Alan, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate it. Mark, did you have a comment? Well, I, I just it seems to me that there's a lot of confusion and chaos going on in the Middle East. And that has to do in, – in, uh, many Americans don't know history. 
They don't know that Western countries at the end of World War I came in and drew a bunch of straight lines on maps. And whenever you see straight lines in the world, you often see problems because you're taking tribes and cultures and you're shoving them together and saying, hey, live together, otherwise you're uncivilized heathens. If uh, some powerful Muslim country decided that it was a good idea to fly drones over the United States to help us with our crime problem. Uh, I mean, it, it's going to throw the, the whole country into chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's one thing that, that you know, and I, I try to avoid like more kind of somewhat moral relativist arguments, but it, it, that's the truth is if we were put in the same position here in the U.S. to have um, Mexico allow China to build a drone base so that they could bomb Texas. We, we would be all like people from Tennessee would be on the border of Texas with their rifles right now. I know I'd probably be there and half my cousins would be too. But we don't look at it that way. We don't see that part of it. And I think a lot of it's because it's, well, it's not happening here. So we have no real connection to it. And with the drone war, we're not losing soldiers. It's not Vietnam. We don't have 10,000 deaths a week. So the, the populace just doesn't really understand the cost of war because America, the cost of war now is mainly financial. Isn't this whole Christians, the caller also mentioned Christians versus Muslims, that this is the narrative, basically. And, and I'm not looking for that narrative. Ridiculous. I mean, isn't that just ridiculous? Not only uh, today, because uh, obviously, as I pointed out before, if, it, if that were true, then we'd have a lot more violence uh, here in the U.S. Than, uh, than is actually happening. But secondly, back in you know Muhammad's time, uh, they weren't out to convert or kill Christians. My my reading of the Quran and understanding of that history was that uh, the Muslims just had a fundamental dis, uh, dis difference in how they viewed God. That you know Muslims see God as this this unity, this They're one thing, uh, and Christians see it as this triune thing. And like that's well, just but, one. But of the, that's going on in Christianity too. The, Trini the Trinitarian and the tr uh, Unitarian. Uh, but there wasn't any proclamation that you know they must convert them. In fact, they as I understood it, they kind of let them each other be. Am I misunderstanding that? Well, the oldest Christian communities on earth lit are in lands that have been predominantly Muslim for 1400 years. So if it was a convert, like there's, there are certain Christian groups that exist nowhere except for the Arab lands, like Maronite Christians or Chaldean Catholics, or, you know, these are groups that they did at one time live in Europe, but they fled to Muslim lands, fleeing from the Roman church because they're, they weren't an unorthodox group, according to the Romans, and therefore expendable and exterminatable. And they fled and have lived in, you know, predominantly majority Muslim areas since then. Then you have the, the Christian community at Damascus and uh, a really interesting story just to, to cover. Hold on, um, before you get before you get into that story, uh, I'd said one more segment, but now we got a bunch more calls for you. Do you want to stick with us? I, I, I'm whatever makes you guys happy. I, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. I think this is great. important stuff to, to cover here. Okay. So good story. Go ahead. Um, well the, um, like the, the there was a, a, an Umayyad King and he took the church of the Damascus from the Christians in Damascus. And then two caliphs later, there was another caliph named Omar Ibn Abdul Aziz. And the way the story is stated is that the Christians in Syria knew him to be a righteous man who followed his faith rather than seeking wealth and power. And they went to him to tell him that his great grandfather basically had taken their church without their, they had, he, he had usurped their rights and taken their church by force. So when that happened, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz told the governor in Syria to speak with the church community and offer them one of two options. That they, since the church had been built onto since the Muslims took it over, they could have the church back. Or they could have money from the treasury to build a new church because an injustice had been done to them. We'll come back with more here uh, with Will Cauley. He's one of the founders, uh, the folks over at Muslims for Liberty. Muslims, the number four liberty. Graciously hanging out with us here, answering your tough questions. If you got them, dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. 
He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 26, 2014. Gold open today at $1,212, silver open at $17.52, and Bitcoin is trading around $399. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news today, two days before Attorney General Eric Holder announced his resignation, U.S. District Court Judge John D. Bates ruled that the Department of Justice must release details on documents related to Operation Fast and Furious. Judge Bates ruled that the Department of Justice must submit the material sought by the watchdog group Judicial Watch no later than October 22nd. The judge called the government's request for more time unconvincing. The FBI director on Thursday criticized the decision by Apple and Google to encrypt smartphone data so it can be inaccessible to law enforcement even with a court order. James Comey told reporters at FBI headquarters that U.S. officials were in talks with the two companies, which he accused of marketing products that would let people put themselves beyond the wall's reach. While law enforcement is obviously perturbed that they will no longer be able to legally or illegally intercept people's data, privacy advocates are heralding the moves by the cell phone giants as an important step in the right direction. Hundreds of speeding tickets written by four disgraced Houston Police Department officers were dismissed after their ticket falsification scheme was exposed. Randy Zamora, chief of the Criminal Law Division for the City of Houston Legal Department, said it was in the interest of justice and simply the right thing to do to dismiss the tickets. The I-team of KHOU in Houston first revealed that officers Rudolph Farias, John Garcia, Robert Manzanellis, and Gregory Rosa were listing each other as witnesses for speeding violations, despite the officers not being present. The gang of four were allegedly seeking to collect more overtime pay for court appearances. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, 500 East Penway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBob's.com. And support also comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 26, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook 
Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. The controversial practice of spraying the skies to alter the weather has recently come under fire. Activists around the planet will spread awareness about the issue of geoengineering tomorrow, Saturday. Businesses like Weather Modification Incorporated claim to increase precipitation, mitigate hail, and disperse fog with plain and ground-based aerosol sprayers, a process known as cloud seeding. The Weather Modification Association claims the practice of cloud seeding began in 1940 and no negative health effects have been found. This weekend, individuals concerned about the health effects of the weather-altering chemicals being sprayed are attending screenings of documentaries, participating in educational marches, and hosting lectures across the globe. The Austin, Texas event takes place tomorrow at noon at the Texas State Capitol. Visit gmacag.com to find a march in your area. Well, this weekend is full of Central Texas Liberty action for both anarchists and politicos. Alliance of Austin Agorists will hold their ninth networking party this Friday evening from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Brave New Books. Don't miss the opportunity to speak with four of Austin's finest crypto geniuses. Michael Goldstein, Justice Randier, Daniel Krawitz, and Jonathan Runyon will each give a talk on what crypto anarchy and agorism means to them and why it matters. Be sure to enjoy the farmer's market, free beer, and live music. Then on Monday, Texans for Accountable Government will be hosting a city council candidate forum and meet and greet. Austinites will have a chance to get face time with candidates running in their district, as well as to get answers to the tough questions. The event will be held at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub on Research Boulevard from 6 to 9 p.m. More information at tagtexas.org. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat, brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for One World Way, tangy tangerine, and clearly filtered fluoride filters. Located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 26, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Everyone in Pennington is talking about it. Something smells like weed in that back part of the library. Head librarian Cookie Stevens and library volunteers Margaret Mosier and Gail Fredericks were in the middle of discussing the upcoming used book saleganza when they smelled something strange. So Jaylen, but Dad yeah. smelled yeah. marijuana somewhere, mm. and we're yes. like shocked. Yeah. And so Doug goes, "Do you smell it?" Without any way to confirm that the smell was indeed weed, Cookie Stevens called her husband Sheriff Stevens, who called in local ceramics teacher Dutch Gibbs, who lived in Seattle for a few months in the 70s. Yeah, that's weed. Sheriff Stevens has begun compiling a list of potential suspects, including that boy Lance who has girl hair and hangs out down by the quarry, Greg Fromke, who was spotted this evening really going to town on some potato skins at Steaky Jake's Steakhouse, and Mr. Thompson. Luckily, one young reading enthusiast seemed unperturbed by the illicit smell. Yeah, I, I don't smell anything. I, I really, really, really love the library. The weed smell comes on the heels of last month's discovery of a gigantic pair of women's underpants in the children's fiction section. According to Stevens, that case remains open as well. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free here and bring up anything, although right now all the calls are all about our Muslim friend who is on the line. He's Will Coley. He's one of the founders of Muslims for Liberty. That's Muslims, the number for liberty.org. Uh, fact is, you know, Islam is a big religion, just like Christianity, and there are a lot of different groups within it. They don't all necessarily agree. And uh, they, in a lot of cases, there's... And they're not going to start anytime soon. No, that's true. And the same thing's true with Christianity. And uh, so we've, we've addressed a lot of the tough issues here tonight. Will specifically has addressed some tough questions. If you've missed the first couple hours of the show, just go and grab the archive later tonight at freetalklive.com. It'll be available for your downloading convenience. And, of course, you can join us here on the air at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. He's uh, generously decided to hang on here into our third hour, which is where we are right now, as uh, continue calls continue to come in with uh, with some good questions here as we bring Will Cauley back on the line with us. Will, thanks for sticking with us. Howdy, howdy. All right, so, so um, go ahead. We were talking like right before the break about the divisions, right? Um, and I guess... A good analogy would be like the Shun the Sunni Shia split. I would see similar to like the Catholic Protestant split. Like, but it happened a lot earlier. Yeah. It, well, instead of yeah, instead of taking a thousand years, it took you know like 50. four. Yeah, it was something. Yeah. Like that. yeah. No. 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 It only took a few years. Okay. The, as soon as Ali took the throne, the Khadijites decided he was invalid, and the next thing you know, there's a, war, a civil war going on. So we're talking like tw within twenty years, this split happened. But 
I would compare it to that, you know, and, and just like you see like violence popping up again in Northern Ireland between Protestants and Catholics in the last couple of months, it's the same kind of thing. Like you've got one group that is the majority um, who is trying to enforce their will on the minority and now, they want to use either the violence of personal violence or the violence of the state to do that. Now, in the case of uh, being a Muslim, that's, this is not, as I understand it from my research, I've read the Quran, I have uh, done some you know, reading about Muhammad's life and some of the things that happened. Um, he, did not, uh, he did not in any way actually advocate for aggressive violence, as I understand it. Uh, he did support defense, like you can defend yourself with violence if someone attacks you. But what I understood was that his teachings were that if someone attacks you, but then they withdraw, that you are not supposed to come back at them at that point. Like if, you know, if somebody's attacking your village or whatever and they, you know, stop and they withdraw, you're not supposed to counterattack. Isn't that true? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, there's a favorite verse that uh, it's like two verses that the anti-Muslim types, they love to, to quote them. But what they do is they remove like the verse at the beginning and like three verses after. Um, the The one that's usually quoted is, uh, chapter 2, verse number 191 through 193. But they they leave off the part that you're actually talking about, which is after that and the part before. So if you start at chapter 2, verse number 190, it says, Fight in the way of God those who fight you, but do not transgress. Indeed, God does not like those who transgress. And kill them wherever you overtake them, and expel them from wherever they have expelled you. For fitna is worse than killing, oppression. To be, you know, oppression, people turning you out from your property, taking your home from you, attempting to take your life, is worse than killing them in return, to, def to defend yourself. Such is the recompense of the disbeliever. And if they cease, then indeed God is forgiving and merciful. Fight them until there is no more oppression or until worship is acknowledged to be for God. But if they cease, then there is to be no aggression except for against oppressors. Fighting in the sacred month is for aggression committed in the sacred month, and for all violations is legal retribution. So whoever has assaulted you, then assault him in the same way that he has assaulted you. Fear God and know that he is with those who fear him. Okay. So you see that it's fight those who have harmed you. It, but but it, at the same it, time, if they're just, not if they're not actively harming if you, if they res, you know, if they retreat, if yeah, they, that's what it says. But right. if they cease, then let there be no aggression except for those who commit oppression. So if there are still if if you've got an army that you're fighting against and the army goes away and like fifteen members decide that they still want to rape, pillage, and burn then continue to fight those people. Got it. Thanks for clearing yeah. that up. I think that's <laughs> one of the most misunderstood uh, passages or you know, tenets, if you will, of, uh, of well, Islam. The problem is, is they take 191 through 193, but they don't put the part at the beginning that says that this violence that's discussed in 191 through 193 is only for those who have attacked you first. Let's go to your calls and thoughts for Will Cauley, one of the uh, folks behind Muslims for Liberty. We've got, I think Tyler is in Lynchburg listening to WLNI. Hey, Tyler. Hi. Hey, you're on How with you Will. How are you Howdy. I, uh, I just have a really quick um, and actually very specific question for you. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny because you actually did just quote some scripture, but... Um, really quick, I just want to quote the first part of Quran 9:29, and then um, Quran 9:5. I'm only leaving out the last part because it's not really relevant. You can add it if you want, but I don't want to take up too much time. So Quran 9:29 states, "Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day." And then Quran 9:5 states, "So when the not so when the sacred months have passed away, then slay the idolaters wherever you find them." and take them captive, and besiege them, and lie in wait for them in every ambush. Then if they repent and keep up prayer and pay the poor rate, leave their way free to them. So my, my question for you after reading that text is, is there any way that you could construe that where a strict reading of that passage does not condone 
the killing of, at the very least, the idolaters, and at the worst case scenario, the infidel. Thanks for the call, Tyler. I appreciate hearing from you. Go ahead, Will. Now you're on the hot seat, that's, mister. <laughs> that's actually, I mean, honestly, that was a very well-worded question. Um, again, it's the same thing that happens with ver with the verses that I was talking about earlier, is that you have to read from the first verse in the chapter. You can't say, well, 929 says this one line and nine five says this. And yep. but ignore Jesus all said the he rest. didn't come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. Yeah, well, but what, it, what the hell does that mean? Because we didn't read the rest of it. Exactly. You have to read the whole chapter. Now, if you start at the first verse, it says that this is a declaration of disassociation of God and his messengers to those which you have made a treaty among the polytheists. Now, the reason for this was there was a religious pilgrimage that was headed to Mecca, and they were attacked by a tribe. These are unarmed religious pilgrims. They're literally like Hair is cut. They have no weapons. They're not even allowed to wear perfume. They have nothing but a piece of white cloth wrapped around them and a belt and the sandals that they have on their feet. And a tribe attacked them. And the prophet went to the Meccans and said, look, this people from your group violated the treaty and murdered these um, religious pilgrims. W you need to do something about this and discipline them. And the Meccans said, no, we told them to do it you know, go piss up a rope. So because of that, because of that breaking of the treaty, God says, the treaty is null and void now, 9-2. So travel freely throughout the land during the four months, but know that you cannot cause failure to God and that God will disgrace you. And it is in an announcement from God and his messenger to the people on the day of the pilgrimage that God has disassociated from the disbelievers, and so is his messenger. If you repent, <clears throat> then that is best for you. But if you turn away, then know that you will not cause failure to God and give glad tidings to those, <laughs> excuse me, and give tidings to those of a painful punishment. Accepted are those, see, this is 9 4, accepted are those with whom you have made a treaty among the polytheists, and they have not been deficient toward you in anything or have supported anyone in violence against you. What does that mean? Tra Translate well, that. Essentially, I like these lost. people killed uh, some of their friends, and uh, you know, it was, it was a declaration of war. Well, yeah, there, were two, there, were, there was a treaty, and basically what it said is the people that broke the treaty in the first three, you can have the right to attack them. But in 9-4, it says... The people who didn't attack you that you have a treaty with, you should complete for them the term we'll of their more. treaty. Hang on. It is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 
877-357-9938. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want generally on this show. Tonight, we're pretty much focusing on... Questions for a Muslim. Will Colley is with us. He is one of the folks behind Muslims for Liberty. Muslims, the number four, liberty.org is their website. Our site is freetalklive.com. If you're just tuning in and you're just coming into this conversation, you missed a lot, uh, you can go to freetalklive.com later on at your leisure and download the archive when it is available, and it will be available uh, later tonight. So go and check that out. And if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Medafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality Medafinil with the best potency so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net also supports the Bitcoin community. You pay with Bitcoin, you get an even better price, 33% off. Plus, use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, to get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, code FTL, that gets you uh, the 10 free tablets over at modup.net, M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. It's world-class service at a great price for Modafinil. As we continue here, uh, Will Colley is on the line with us here. Now, it's always difficult for me, Will, when we start getting into... Oh, sorry, that's not Will. That was uh, a video playing from my web browser. Now we have Will uh, back with us here. Everything's coming through the same computer, so apologize uh, about that. Now, Will, uh, you were explaining it's always difficult when somebody starts reading Scripture because it can get a little dry. It can be hard to to handle, and I don't want this to be a a, a Quran study uh, session necessarily, so I want to be aware of that. But you were trying to make a point about context and uh, surrounding sort of uh, the claims that, well, here's some, here's some, uh, you know, what are they called in the in the Quran? The verses? Oh, ayah. Ayah. Surrounding some of the ayahs that uh, that suggest violence, but you're saying you got to take that into context, and that was you were in the middle of explaining. It, you got cut yeah. off by our our, our break. Well, 
I'm actually glad that he brought this first up. I actually had this already open because I expected to get this one because it's one that's used quite often. Basically, 9-5, which is one of the verses that he cited, says, kill the polytheists wherever you find them. I mean, that's an edited version. It, it yeah, continues on. But 9-4 <laughs> says, except for the ones who have not harmed you or assisted others in harming you. So for you to say that 9-5 is an open advocation of killing anyone that's not Muslim, you'd have to ignore 9-4. And if you read 9-7, it says, how can there be a treaty in the sight of God and his messenger except for those with whom you made a treaty so long as they are upright toward you, be upright toward them? Now, so, doesn't that contradict – I mean, don't, don't those statements, though, contradict the statement that we talked about earlier where the, uh, the, the, the idea is that if somebody stops their attack uh, on, on you as a Muslim, that you are not allowed to a counterattack on those, those people. You're supposed to let them go their way and you know, call it a day, basically. But there it sounds like it's saying, well, if someone's broken a treaty, then you can just go ahead and slaughter them? Well, no. If they've committed a uh, an act of violence against you, you have the right to to commit violence against them in return, as, but, a, as in defense. Isn't it true though that Muhammad didn't actually do that? In uh, at least I remember one story where there was some you know crazy psychopath who was you know killing people and was uh, trying to attack uh, Muhammad, and you know he forgave him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's lots of personal instances where that happened, but as far as like. Um, the Battle of Hudabiyah or the Battle of Badr Well or the Battle of Mecca, the three major military battles, those happened. Um, one, the first two were because of invasions. The Meccans invaded Medina and the Prophet and his companions and the people of Medina, Christians, Jews, Muslims, everybody, well, except for Badr, um, went out and met them on the battlefield and fought uh, in defense. The last battle, the Battle of Mecca, was more of an offensive defensive battle where religious pilgrims were slaughtered and the Muslims, they, they violated the treaty and the Muslims were like, okay, well, you're going to continue to do this. Yeah, mm. it, it was, it was, the Meccans made it clear that this wasn't something that was going to stop. So by the Quran, were, it's, it's, uh, you know, okay to attack back somebody who has broken a treaty, and, but not necessarily only the case. Up to the, only up to the point that they broke the treaty, though. Mm -hmm. So, like, if they didn't kill people on your side, then you have no right to react in a military fashion. If they didn't turn people out of their homes, I they didn't usurp the rights of people, then there's no clearance for military action. But even but though it may have been okay by the, the Quran, Muhammad himself... Uh, had forgiven some some attackers in the past. Many many attackers. Yeah. Uh, there there's stories of of him actually having an assassin walking behind him, and he turns around and like forgives him for the fact that he's there to assassinate him, even though he's never said that he's got a knife hidden and that that's why he's there. You know, like he's a, forgives his assassin. He puts his hand on his heart and he's like, "I know what is troubling you, and I forgive you." You know, so I mean, and that's what's always stated is that. Um, retribution is allowed, but forgiveness is always what's better. I like that. Let's go to David. Your questions for our Muslim friend, Will Cauley, from Muslims for Liberty. David is in Anniston, Alabama. And David, you're on Free Talk Live with Will. Yeah. Good evening. Hey, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Mike, uh, Christ had no authority for the uh, his uh, gospel from God, the uh, Muhammad. Where does it say he got his authority from, and when, or who did he get it from? Thanks for the call, David. Appreciate hearing from you. Go ahead, Well, Well, the story goes that the first time he received revelation from the angel Gabriel, um, the same angel that appeared to Mary and told her the news that Jesus was going to be born, um, he went to a Christian scholar named uh, Wadaka and basically told him, like, look, this is what this angel has told to me. I'm afraid that I'm crazy, or maybe it's the devil, like, I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm in fear, though. And when he described to Wadaka, the Christ, this Christian monk, what was being told to him, the Christian monk told him, what is, what is coming to you is from God, and you're that messenger, or that prophet, which is described in biblical tradition. Um, so, he told him, like, look, you know, this is from God. And then later on, the angel Gabriel appeared to him again. But, you know, the, the 
what's the word? The authority came from God. Uh, some Muslim, some Islamic apologists actually say that the uh, there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus talks about the one who will come later who will speak, you know, what God tells him to say. Um, and that that's who Muhammad is, is that God, you know, that it was a revelation that God told him and then it, he told the people. In, I mean, essentially, the Quran was, is like an update. I mean, basically, you know, as I understood it, uh, that God sent this angel down that's the to, idea. Right, to uh, yeah, you know, yeah. correct some misinformation about, you know, what the uh, the word was in the Bible at that point. Like, yeah, oh, no, it's not a three God. It's a one God kind of thing. It was one of the. Yeah, well, I mean, the things. Quran even says, like, your God, tell those people of the book, the Christians and Jews. Your God and our God are one. Right. Hey, uh, we're going to come back with more. we got Will Cauley, and if you've got questions, it, people do. They're on the line waiting patiently here. We'll uh, get to you. Uh, 855-450-3733. Got a question for a Muslim? we got one right here. It's Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot free talk live dot com this your family today tip is brought to you by stofers helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options even on the busiest of nights find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at let's fix dinner dot com to get kids involved in dinner time conversation ask specific questions not broad ones instead of what happened today at school try what was the best thing that happened today the more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. 
Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Well, that's generally how things work around here. Uh, but we've actually had so much interest in our special guest who, I just he just happened to call in last night to talk about the beheading in Oklahoma right at the very uh, uh, end of last night's show. And I said, you know what, well, we got to have you call in at the beginning of our Saturday show so we can really address this issue. And, of course, that led to question after question by people who, you know, you hear things about Muslims, but you don't actually usually talk to them uh, because even though there's a bunch of them around the world, there doesn't seem to be that many of them, at least in my daily life. And, uh, and so I'm grateful that we've got Will Cauley here from Muslims for Liberty, Muslims the number four, liberty.org, to answer your questions. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here tonight now uh bounty hunting bounty hunting for bitcoin you can go to bitcoinbountyhunter.com and check out some of the bounties available for collection now uh one of them is worth 38 bitcoin now at what about what is it right now 400 bucks somewhere there about 400 dollars per bitcoin range 38 of those that's a lot of money it's a big bounty you can use your investigative skills and collect in fact you can even place your own bounty or add to the ones that are already there if you think there are important cases that need to be solved throw some bitcoin at it uh, the authorities aren't going to be solving these cases anytime soon it's going to be done by somebody like you someone that profits from your work and skill go check out bitcoinbountyhunter.com and we are back uh, with Will Coley, who is on the line and has been throughout the whole show uh, graciously from his home in Tennessee, uh, from Muslims for Liberty. And, Will, I want to get to some more calls here, so let's jump back into it. Uh, we've got J Jose uh, in Grand Rapids listening to WTKG. Jose, you're on with Will. And I really, I, I just discovered your show a couple of weeks ago, and I really congratulate you for such a great, great show. I mean, it, you Thanks. guys give it the time for topic discussion. And uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure, go for it. I have, I have two quick questions and, and a longer little comment. One is, I want to, if no one has asked, because I was in transition uh, between the radios, if uh, what, what, what is the gentleman's uh, affiliation, Sunni or Shia? And secondly, what is his conception of liberty? Uh, Good I question. Hope, I, I wish him the best. I think the problem is that he has a... Uh, a, a very good, strong foundation in American constitutionalism experience, which I don't think is the experience of Islam uh, from its birth. There's no denial uh, involved in admitting that. I mean, we, we cannot deny that um, Muhammad was uh, not just a religious figure, but he was also a general. And however we cut it, um, there are. Uh, the questions of of the uh, imposition of, of of the religion. Uh, secondly, the the constitution of Medina, as and I have it right in front of me, it's really not a constitution in the sense that that we conceive a constitution to be in the West. I I I, I hope and I, I wish your your host really really the best. Uh, I think that he's onto something, and um, I, I hope that he can succeed. But. Um, I do not believe that that it is possible uh, for a religion that uh, that that philosophically has a problem with with reason in the way that we understand the logos uh, coming from 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 the the side of Christianity, which led to international law, led to uh, all kinds of problems. All with all the problems that the West had between you know religion and and, and the church and state. It was still able to formulate uh, um, a, a, an engagement with reason. Uh, Jose, uh, I want to thank you from. for the comment and the questions. I'm going to let Will answer them, and thank you for the call tonight. appreciate hearing from you. Uh, Will, your thoughts on the, the, the alleged constitution of Medina? I'm not familiar with it. Oh, it was just a, a set of contracts between tribal peoples that stated that they wouldn't attack each other and that if anyone attacked them, 
they would all defend each other, basically. You know, are, it was, are, are you Sunni or Shiite? Uh, most people would define – depends on who you ask. Like if I'm debating a, a Salafi, then they call me a Sufi or they call me a Shia. If I'm debating against a Shia, they call me a Salafi. You know, I, I'm, I'm Muslim. I study Maliki jurisprudence, which is considered a Sunni school of, of, of Islam. But I, I personally try to avoid all of those kinds of, you know, uh, artificial labels that that are there. Um, His other question far, was, what about your conception of liberty? What does that mean to you? Well, I was led to voluntarism by my study of Islamic jurisprudence. Like, I was a politically apathetic person who wasn't particularly liberty-minded um, until I started studying Islamic jurisprudence. And the, the more I studied, the basically the closer I slid into, like, a free market, voluntarist, anarchist sort of, you know, uh, viewpoint on life. And, uh, Davi Barker wrote a book about this called Voluntary yeah. Islam, and I yeah. read that book, and it was excellent. He goes into some of the, the history of, uh, of Islam and, and looks yeah. at how voluntarist it actually was, how consensual or right. uh, consent-oriented that and it was. Liberty, as we understand it here in the West, is something that was created by sort of the Enlightenment period. And, um, well, the father, the, uh, the, what most sociologists and historians credit Ib, uh, Averroes. As the fa as being the father of the Enlightenment, but Averroes isn't his name. His name is Ibn Rushd. He's Muslim. That's the reason why in that great painting with all the great philosophers and scientific minds, there's one Muslim guy over on the side, Ibn Rushd, is because most sociologists and historians see him as the father of the Enlightenment because he was the bridge between. Greek Aristotelian philosophy and the European Western world. He was the the person that Aristotelian philosophy went through before it got to Western culture. So, you know, uh, uh, John Locke openly expressed that Ibn Tufail was very influential on his concept of natural rights. Uh, his book Hayyib Ibn Yaqzan, which later became the Philosophicus Autodacticus. Um, these are Muslim philosophers from the 12th and 11th and 13th centuries who had an immense amount of influence on Western Enlightenment thinkers. Uh, when, when John Locke talks about the right to life, liberty, and estate, I hear Sharia because the, there are five natural rights and goals of law in Sharia, the protection of life, the protection of faith, the protection of the intellect, the protection of family, and the protection of property. Well, that just sounds horrifying. We can't well, have anything to do with that. And Sharia gave it to women, which was something that you know wasn't done up to that point. Right. Which is what? Yeah. yeah. Right. The, uh, well, the well, it actually there's there's a statement of Muhammad where he says, you know, that if you die, if someone tries to rob your house and you die in defense of your property, that you're seen on the same level as a martyr who was murdered on behalf of the faith. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, to protect one's property is literally like a religious compulsion The the the, the right of pri like you couldn't be a Muslim communist hmm. because private property and the right to private property is sacrosanct. It's actually like it's the fifth maqasid in in the foundations of Sharia, you know, is the protection of your right to protect your property. <laughs> Let's go to uh, continue with your calls for Will Colley from Muslims for Liberty. Derek is in Indianapolis. Derek, you're on Free Talk Live. Who's your? Hey, guys. Uh, just a quick question for you there, Will. Um, I know sure. some people that have kind of advocated for reading the Quran, and obviously that's one of the best ways to determine for yourself about a specific religion is to read up on it yourself. I'm just wondering if you have, like, a specific translation that you would recommend, or are they all kind of generally okay? Because I've been to several oh, bookstores, God. and you just see multiple translations. Anything that comes so from Saudi Arabia, throw it in the – well, don't throw it uh, – burn it, because that's the <laughs> – Islam. I mean, seriously, that's the Islamically compliant way to dispose of a Quran is to burn it and then put the ashes in moving water. If it comes from Saudi Arabia, you don't want to read it. Um, PBS, it, it's so bad that PBS actually did a documentary called Inside the Quran where they pointed out all the purposeful mistranslation. Oh. I would go with a Muhammad Assad translation personally because it has a great commentary by a, a renowned scholar and it has one of the best English translations that I've found. Muhammad Assad? 
Yeah. All right. Thanks. A-S-A-D. Derek, thanks for the call tonight. We're going to continue here in moments. Your calls, 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens, gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road Anonymous Black Marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. We might be able to sneak your call in about whatever topic you want to discuss. The toll-free number is 855-453, and our normal format you know, resumes most every night of the week. Normally, we don't have a guest on for the 
sh- whole show. Normally we don't do guests at all, uh, and then usually we don't do them for the entire program. But we've got Will from Muslims for Liberty with us here, and uh, I think we're just about tapped out on questions for him. But I still had a question, your questions, that is. I still had something I wanted to ask and Mark. I don't know if there was anything that you didn't get to. Uh, with Will, but Muslims the number four Liberty is the Muslims the number four Liberty dot org uh, is his website. Our website, by the way, is freetalklive.com. dot com. And uh, coming up here in just about a month, actually, it's going to be Keenvention. Keenvention in its second year. Great excuse to come up and check out New Hampshire. Uh, Will was actually here for the Porcupine Freedom Festival earlier this summer, and uh, Keenvention's a little bit different. It's not a camping event. This is a hotel-based event, but there's a lot of things to do outside of the hotel as well, because I don't want to keep you cooped up in a hotel all weekend, get you out on the streets, do some uh, Robin Hooding or Cop Block, uh, maybe go out and uh, and go to some galactic bowling with karaoke. So we've got some fun stuff going on during Keenvention, including a Halloween costume party. Uh, there's going to be some VIP meals for those of you with the VIP tickets for Keenvention. So there's a lot of stuff happening outside of the hotel, but the in-hotel curriculum is all about activism. The panel discussions, the speakers. If you've been listening to Free Talk Live for a while, you know we moved here as part of the Free State Project, that liberty-minded people from all across the world are coming to New Hampshire to get active for freedom, and they're of all different uh, political and religious viewpoints. I guess not political, but religious viewpoints. I guess from a political perspective, Free Staters are running as Republicans and Democrats, and they're winning election uh, on on both of those parties' tickets. We're going to have a legislative panel talking about how to be effective in the state house. We'll have a cop block panel, uh, which is brand new for this year. New movers panel, getting uh, newbies to kind of give their perspective on things here. Last year we did the old school movers panel, so there's going to be a lot of different uh, subjects to cover. Mark, you're going to be hosting the news media panel uh, as well. So there's going to be several panels. In fact, just this week I announced that we're also going to be doing a theatrical premiere of the 101 Reasons film, which I'm very excited about. Uh, This is a documentary documentary film that's going to go over 101 reasons uh, or thereabouts to move to New Hampshire, why this is the place for freedom-loving people. And that movie is expected to be just having the finishing touches put on it in time for Keenvention. So we've actually got a, a, a real live movie theater that we're going to go to and, and have ourselves a movie premiere. And then after that, uh, we'll go back to the Keenvention Hotel for a question and answer session with the producers of the film. So very excited about that. That's something new for Keenvention this year. Go check it out. It's 60 bucks. Get you in for the entire weekend. And only 100 tickets are available in advance. So don't wait. Uh, get your tickets today. And it's, by the way, you can pay Bitcoin for them if you'd like as well. Keenvention info if you want to know more go there there's all kinds of info there plus you can even watch all of the panels and speakers from 2013 give you a good taste of what it was like last year uh, so keenvention.info as we go back here to will from muslims for liberty will Colley, thanks for sticking with us basically for the entire show it's been a long time since we've had a guest on for the entirety of free talk live but the calls just kept coming in great questions for you was uh, i had a just kind of a question about uh, women uh, being a woman and a muslim and we talked touched on the idea earlier is my understanding from studying uh, Islam to some extent that uh, Islam was was progressive for women you know compared to the idolaters and the pagans that came before uh, the the Muslims there they advanced the the rights of women and but still today you know you'll see women wearing burqas and uh, you'll hear a lot of negativity from people rumors about you know how uh, women aren't equal just comments in general about being I don't know a if it's woman. just rumors I mean certainly plenty of places and, um, yeah. It's it's not just rumors. It's true. It's happening. Um, there's actually uh, this gives me an opportunity to kind of go into something that I was hoping to, to cover before we, uh, you know, closed out. Is you know, don't listen to me. I'm just a student. Um, don't believe a word that I say. But do take the time to listen to some of the actual scholars that do exist out there. Um, and one of them is Habib Ali. H a b i b a l i. And he he's giving a speech to a Muslim audience um, as a Muslim, and they're there because they want to learn from him as a scholar. And he acknowledges it. He says, you know, we have family members raping family members. We have uh, wives being oppressed by their husbands, and we have religious uh, authorities upholding this and trying to state that their culture is a part of our religion. And I mean, he gets very upset. And you can see that he's noticeably upset, and and it, because it's a reality, it is something that's happening. 
but when you go and you 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 see these speakers and they talk about these things, they state that you know the the commentaries by the people who knew Muhammad personally, Sallallahu were that basically men and women have the same rights, um, and that the the way the Quran says it is that. Uh, men and women have the same rights, and men are at one degree above women. And when the companion of Muhammad, uh, Ibn Abbas, wrote his commentary about the Quran, he stated that that degree is that men are required to basically not get upset if a woman doesn't fulfill all of her rights to him because of the fact she has difficulty, nusk is the word, that's used difficulty in her condition, and the examples that are given are uh, pregnancy, menstrual period, child rearing, breastfeeding. Because women have all of these things that they're doing, if you basically if you come home and dinner ain't ready, shut up and make it yourself. Because the Prophet Sallallahu did, so you're no better. You know the the. the well, I'm glad to see Muhammad didn't have any better than I do. Well, yeah, the Hadith traditions actually state that Muhammad cooked his own food, mended his own sandals, washed his own laundry, and helped his wife sweep the house. You know, I hope she had a good paycheck. Yeah. So, and but don't listen to me. Go out and listen to some of these scholars. Hamza Yusuf does a great lecture on women in Sharia. He's giving it to a Muslim audience as a Muslim, and these people are there wanting to learn about this. Um, Mokhtar Magawi, M-O-K-H-T-A-R. Just put that in and then put an M and his name will pop right up. He does, uh, he's the foremost scholar on Shafi'i legal theory in the world right now. And he does two amazing lectures on Sharia law. He covers everything you'd ever want to hear about from uh, the death penalty to like the, the cutting of hands to apostasy to adultery like he literally covers all the hot button issues can and you do me a favor post- can you do me a favor and send me a link to that and then I'll repost yeah. it on the free talk live Facebook Google yeah. plus Twitter so folks Absolutely. can easily access that information because obviously there's a lot more that you can learn about this yeah, we can yeah. discuss here uh, like in I this- said, don't, don't take my word for it yeah. go listen to people like I'm a student I've only been studying this for seven years these people have literally put 20 and 30 years mm-hmm. of their life into studying this and they fill auditoriums with thousands of people wanting to learn from them so go listen to Hamza Yusuf, listen to Suhaib Webb, listen to uh, Zaid Shakar, because they are who the American Muslim community is listening to. And the message that they send is nothing like what you're hearing from, you know, mainstream your, media. Yeah, your extremist in Pakistan or your ISIS guy in, in Iraq. Uh, Will Hamza Coley, Yusuf. I want to say thank yeah. you. I really appreciate yep. your time tonight. Thanks for coming on. I think it's been very... You know, enlightening as has been you know everything i've ever read about uh, islam and you know when i've taken the time to learn on my own as opposed to just listening to what people say so thank you for the call tonight i appreciate Thanks it for having me. yep that's Thanks muslims for, having- for liberty by the way muslims the number four liberty and send me over that link and then i'll uh, pass that yeah. on and thank you will let's go real quick to mike the one call where you can call about anything tonight here on free talk live <laughs> mike you're in ohio you're on free talk live go hi uh i'm a non-religious person in a mostly christian area I'm often seeing a lot of hate for Muslims whenever the topic of uh, Muslims come up. And I'd like to know how to encourage some empathy in those people. If you have any ideas. Boy, that is a good question. I guess education's been... the best thing I can suggest is is that people fear what they don't what they're ignorant of right. and what's different uh, from them. It helps and... if they can meet a nice Muslim to talk to and like, you know, connect with on a human level rather yeah. than just listening to people talk on the radio or... Islam is very similar to Christianity and and you know, I mean, that's it's it, shockingly similar. Well, it, it, it's what yeah. it came from. Right. And so once people can find out more about it, they can be they can understand it more Then you know, that's that. I, I tend, you know, the way I come from this is, hey, you know, leave your religion at the door on this. Uh, this is about people getting uh, getting along with each other. And, you know, if you're playing teams, oh, well, my team's better than your team. You're never going you're never going to get along. It's like putting a Yankees fan and a Red Sox fan in a room and telling them to talk about baseball. They're going to fight. Good answer. Mike, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. Oh, and I should have said this to uh, Will Cauley. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. That is like the standard greeting and goodbye 
when you are a Muslim. Is it like wishing p- for peace or something? And the response is, well, it's, it, it, it translates to peace be upon you. Uh-huh. Um, and the response is, what was it? Oh, alaykum lakum lam. Something like wa alaykum salam. Okay, I just make some noises like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I think it's been enlightening, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, because, Mark, you'll be here for the live Sunday edition. Indeed. At that time, we'll see you online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Is go- the chimpanzee spends most of its day in the jungle, carelessly swinging from tree to tree and picking mites off itself, instead of building shelter and teaching itself how to read. This chimp is named Bolo, and researchers at Duke University have shown that he can solve three-dimensional logic puzzles, an impressive feat indeed, until you learn that human children as young as three are also able to solve the puzzle. Even a mentally handicapped human is capable of verbal speech, something no chimpanzee has ever been able to accomplish, despite working vocal cords capable of howling in irritation after soiling itself. Chimps have been observed using tools, but their tools are little more than sticks. Even driving and preparing pancakes, tasks we leave to the stupidest, least educated humans, lay beyond the capabilities of the chimp. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate well, I know a guy who's really great It's the Realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres a lakeside cabin any takers for renters buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, September 27th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,219 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $406. Antiwar.com reports some 700 Taliban fighters attacked the Azrastan district of the Ghazni province in Afghanistan earlier this week and seem to have more or less taken it over, with provincial officials saying they have lost contact with police in the area. Fighting is expected to last well into the weekend, with over 100 killed and Afghan army forces being pushed back and giving the Taliban effective control over the extremely important district, which includes the nation's main highway, which goes from Kabul to Kandahar. The Taliban has made increasing gains across the south and central portions of Afghanistan in recent months as NATO tries to stay back and let the Afghan military prove itself in direct fighting. So far, the news has not been good. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports a contract employee who recently was told he was being transferred to Hawaii set a fire at a suburban Chicago air traffic control center where he worked, bringing two of the nation's busiest airports to a halt Friday morning. A criminal complaint was filed in U.S. District Court in Chicago and charges Brian Howard of Naperville, Illinois, with one count of destruction of aircraft or aircraft facilities, which is a felony. The FBI said that Howard remains hospitalized because of his injuries and 
and that no court date has yet been scheduled. A relative who saw a suicidal Facebook note posted on Howard's account early Friday alerted authorities. Meanwhile, a 911 call from the control center brought a suburban fire department to the scene where paramedics followed a trail of blood past a gas can, two knives, and a lighter. When they found Howard, he was trying to cut his own throat and told paramedics, quote, leave me alone. Delays and cancellations rippled through the air travel network from coast to coast after the fire. The ground stoppage at O'Hare and Midway airports immediately raised questions about whether the FAA has adequate backup plans to keep planes moving when a single facility has to shut down. By late afternoon, about 1,900 flights in and out of Chicago had been canceled. A few flights resumed after a nearly five-hour gap. Those planes were moving at a much reduced pace, and no one could be sure when full service would be restored. The early morning fire forced the evacuation of the control center in Aurora, about 40 miles west of downtown Chicago. It was the second unexpected shutdown of a Chicago area air traffic facility since May. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot fppradio.com. Reuters reports, talks began on Friday to mark out a 19-mile buffer zone between the Ukrainian government forces and the separatist rebels in the country's east. A statement by the military in Kiev said a Ukrainian team met a 76-member group of Russian officers north of the major Ukrainian city of Donetsk to work on establishing the zone designed to put government and separatist forces out of striking range of each other. A statement was released saying, Today, a working group began its work. Representatives of the Ukrainian side, a monitoring group from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and 76 Russian servicemen took part. An OSCE spokesman in Kiev said monitors from the 57 Nations Security and Rights Watchdog had observed Ukrainian and Russian military officers at preliminary talks. The spokesman said, We were there in line with our mandate and to help for the effective implementation of a ceasefire. In Moscow, the foreign ministry denied any of its military had met a Ukrainian team to work out details of the buffer zone. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A harrowing situation on Broad Street came to its conclusion Thursday night as a group of hostages were freed from local comedy club The Laugh-Up Lounge after a tense seven-minute stand-up set. Every once in a while, he'd grab his notebook